Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to the Archcast. Let's see who shows up today. I think Dev is, uh, he's eaten himself into a coma. He was napping last time I checked. It's like, I'll be there. I'm just napping. And I think V might make an appearance today as well. We shall see. We shall see. It'll be a surprise. It'll be a big old surprise. <sighs> Hello. Hello, V. Are we live? We are. Hello, chat. We are alive and well. Arch, I have a question. <laughs> is it a question? It is. What you is? You know the about the Judge Dread universe, right? I do. I I think I know where you're gonna go with this as well. So I I, I want to go with this and ask if defunding the judges, because they realized. That all people need is more education. I'm just trying to. Ah, uh... oh, there we go. Yep, I found. Uh, I found the article of it. Uh, this yeah. that is actually a thing that's, that's going on. Yes. Yeah. So, so like the the I was wondering like why is this pissing me off? You know, like what well, what is the issue with it? And the issue with it is that doesn't make sense within the universe. It's like something that they took from modern day politics something that even people that are minorities are supposed to benefit from this do not support and the writer is going it's like yeah actually actually this is good this is good and i'm willing to I bet have, if I you go lost. on twitter and you say that it's bad they will block you they will mock and ridicule you it's entirely possible i haven't um I'm, I'm going to see if I can find the issue in question, because this is going to be a part of a multi-part series. So who knows where they're actually going to go with this. Uh, but yes, 2000 AD uh, has decided to begin a series within Judge Dredd, uh, which focuses on uh, defunding the judges, and it's titled A Better World. So the story is about the fact that one of the judges discovered that if you educate people, the level of crime goes down. So basically, like, the brutality of the judges is not effective in stopping crime. And if you want to stop crime, you just got to build the academia. Build the academia. Build the academia. I see. Yes. What, what would the problem with that be in the Judge Red universe? Uh, because the issues in the Judge Dredd universe, in the Mega City one, isn't one of education. It's one of uh, access to food. It's one of access to healthing. It's one of access to healthing, he to housing, to healthcare, etc. Like, one of the panels they show, and I'm, I'm gonna need to try and find this comic so I can actually read it and see, but they've got, um, the sector services, the so <laughs> social employees coming around to stop crime, right? Uh, and they've got one with a homeless man, a little sign going, please help. And they come to him and they say that, oh, they're going to try and find him housing. That, that it, it's not that easy. Like, Judge Dredd, the, the Mega City one, was over capacity as it was when it was a fully functioning city. After the Apocalypse War, it is now even more over capacity. Like, Mega City 1 can't care for the people it already has. It's, this isn't the current year where housing is not the problem. You know, in Mega City 1, finding a house for a homeless person is not even hard. It's probably impossible. It's not even that. It's like, okay, it, it, there's no jobs for people. Yeah, like, no. Like, even if, because yeah. you have robots. Right? The like, unemployment like, rate in the Judge Dredd universe is like 97%. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that's the biggest issue, right? Like, like even if someone is educated, how will, like, what do they do with that education? Well, um, nothing. Yeah, literally. But, but the thing, like, the, the, the reason that this upsets me is that it's leftist propaganda, right? Yes. Which is... Um, all people need is more education. If only we can give the criminal more compassion. It's compassion. And I'm thinking like, okay, there was an article that came up two months ago where a school teacher was hospitalized by a student because she took away his Nintendo Switch. And I'm thinking like, you can have the best teachers in the world. Like, like you can go through human history and get like the most talented and, and most charismatic teacher that you can find. 
there is nothing that they can teach to a student that lacks discipline. Like, like if, if he's not going to sit in the bench and listen, if he's going to play on his Nintendo Switch, and when you take it away from him, you get hospitalized. There, there is, like, literally nothing that you can do. There isn't, no? Yeah. And like, the, um, the part is, too, dread, they, yeah. uh, they actually state it. Uh, I don't... I, I found this on my uh, my Twitter, actually, that I uh, clipped this out, because I found this article that talks about it. Let me see if I can find my tweet on it, where they specifically state that the reason why they're doing this is because of what was happening in America. Here we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I was somewhat wary of writing a defund the police story in Dreads World when the riots were taking place in America. It just seemed a little too on the nose, but there's been some distance since, which makes it easier, makes it more about the ideas at play here. So again, like this is not a Judge Dredd story. This is a this is currently going on in the U.S. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but what's interesting though is that if you look at the communities that have been affected by this policy. Like, even if the cops didn't get defunded, they got demoralized. Like, just, just because of this chant, right? Um, so you have, like, all these communities that are now struggling because they, they have, like, their stores being closed down due to the high rates of crime. Uh, they, they have, like, Walmart walking out of the community and whatever. So, so basically, even the people in those communities disagree that defunding the police is good. Like, they thought for a moment, though, wouldn't it be nice? But then when they actually saw the results, they're like, oh, shit. The Democrats changed their tune. Like, they were all for defund the police. Like, you have Democrat senators speaking. And then, right? and then when they saw that they were falling in the polls that badly, they were like, all right, well, we need to change the rhetoric. So, like, even, even Americans today, the overwhelming majority on the right and people on the left Harris are like, yeah, the defund question. the police is actually Fire a bad pick. <laughs> yes, uh, there's also the problem that this didn't work. <laughs> like, the, this argument makes it more about the ideas at play. Like, you are entirely correct. The Democrat went from defund to refund the police because they tried this. And what was the result of reducing police in areas rife with crime? It was an increase in crime. In the Judge Dredd story, when they reduce um, funding to the, the judges and they send in sector social services, suddenly crime just, just disappears. Wow. I, I wonder how. Well, it's because it's fantasy. That's why. Yeah. But, but if you look at what leftists understand by crime, right? Um, for them, have, crime is if you go on the keyboard and type the N-word. Like, all of a sudden, the entire police district arrives at your house. Uh, if you say an edgy joke on the Twitter, all of a sudden, that's a crime. If you spray some graffiti on a synagogue, so that's a crime. If, if, if you rob, if you steal, they will justify that. In defense of looting, the book, you know? Like, they, they will justify violent crime... While crime that is basically people being assholes, that's being treated as super serious, as like terrorist level. While crime that is like genuine crime and, and it's actually destroying communities, that, that that's like meh. Meh. <laughs> meh. Meh. You know, and meh. again, the, so the biggest issue here isn't... Like, th this is a discussion we've had. We've had this discussion. We've tried this in reality... Reality rejected it. it. It doesn't work. And this is in a far more prosperous, far healthier, far better society than the one in Judge Dredd. And there, there is no argument to be made here. Like, we have the answer, the definitive answer. There, there is no question at all. And again, in the Judge Dredd universe, this makes particularly little sense. Because... As, as you put it, the problem here isn't a lack of education, it is a lack of resources. I don't care how well educated you are. You can have two top-tier university professors. If there's only one sandwich in the room, somebody's gonna kill the other. Like, literally, Dr. Fauci, who is the science, would, would not be able to, to get a job in the Judge Dredd universe. Like, the savior of mankind, the, the, the guy they like that took us through the darkness that was the pandemic would not be able to have a job in the Judge Dredd universe. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. It's a very dumb thing, and it is entirely based on modern-day politics, as is everything, of course.
On the bright side, the Judge Red universe, they do eat humans, so that's a way of uh, dealing with, uh, you know, the climate change, so, you know. To be honest, you know, like, if the story was like, all right, well, this judge found out that education lowers crime, and they're starting to defund the judges, and then they found out, oh, she tinkered with the results. That would be an interesting story. Yeah, and to be fair, it is entirely pop possible that that might be where they're heading because it's the first part of what's going to be a longer series and the thing is judge dread has actually toyed with this idea before uh, judge dread himself has become far more liberal over the years and by liberal i mean uh he'll arrest you instead of shoot you so you know. <laughs> that that is that is the liberal question. ideology Fire in mega city one <laughs> It is what it is. I, I think that um, it, it highlights the problem with American entertainment. Everything has to be current day. Everything, like whatever talking point there is today, it has to be in the comic book. Well, this is Even the if cultural it makes sense or it doesn't Because uh, I'm pretty sure that this is a British magazine. So it's not an American thing. It's, uh, it's the American culture. Yeah, but they had the, the defund the police too. And, and yep. again, like, oh, my fucking God, that makes so much sense. Because it, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense, right? But it does make sense because it doesn't. Uh, in Britain, they don't, like, police officers don't shoot black people, right? And yet, and yet they had, like, BLM protests and it was, like, defund the police and all that garbage. They did. They did have those. Yeah. Anyways, let me go through the couple of the super chats we got, and uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about Boeing before we get to the serious stuff, because Boeing's funny. Uh, Muxman 117B, V, about the guy who spent 50k. The reason people are mad is because the money was funding for his animated YouTube series. He currently bankrupt. I guess this okay. is a you thing. Uh, all right, let me let me tell you this, Arch. Uh, are you aware of Has Been Hotel? Uh, yes, tangentially. It's from the person who Here's made Hell of a Boss, Fires, right? Man. The thing he made yes. before that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you know who Charlie is in, in Has Been Hotel? I do not. Let me see if I can. Hold oh, on, wait. I'll, I'll show you. Oh, Has Been Hotel is an actual series now. Because this was just yes. a, a web series. Okay, well, I will I'll show you. This is Charlie, right? Okay, let's not actually uh, run that on YouTube. Let's scroll down a moment. Uh, Charlie, the brown person or the woman? No, the, the, the woman. Okay, so the main character, I'm presuming, because he's on the cover yes, and stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Right, right, right. So this guy, right, paid $50,000 for a self-insert into the cartoon. Like, he got a, a studio the of animators Fire is the answer. to draw a, a three-minute clip music video where Charlie is chasing him around to rape him. And eventually she catches him and does it. Ah, uh, which guy? Um, the, the brown the, guy? The black dude. Yeah, yeah. Okay, He's, so uh, that's a fan who paid $50,000 for yes. a fan animation? I, I know that your brain is, is very well developed, probably more developed than mine, I would say. But but I, I can see that it's struggling to comprehend this issue. No, no, see, I, I can kind of get it because <laughs> I probably spent $50,000 on 40k art over the course of my career. So so would you, would you spend like $50,000? K, uh, $1, to have your character, your self-insert, into 40k. That, that, that'd probably be a bit much. That, that'd probably be a yeah, bit, a bit much. much, right? Like, it's, 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 you know, like, there's a line that even we do not cross. It's like, okay, well, this is this is a little bit too much of a vanity project, right? Like, I, I can see you make a 40k armor. Like, I, I can see you spend 40k thousand in order to make, like, a, a space marine suit in real life. That's, like, a replica, but it's really good that it works. Like, I can see you doing that. But but would you like self insert yourself as a space marine in a video game or or in a yeah? I'm just okay, gonna so, so... bring up all the thumbnails I've had drawn of myself and various things. But but hold on hold on right like because because this is where it gets interesting. So so he spent fifty thousand dollars for for the self insert, uh, and apparently he crippled his YouTube channel because like his YouTube channel was all about making animations and now he doesn't have money to make those, and it gets even more interesting. Apparently, he has, like, a YouTube Kids channel. I heard, like, I, I haven't confirmed this. But he has a YouTube Kids channel, and that one got affected because of the algorithm. 
because he released this video, it affected his other channel. Huh. Well, I mean, this animation has got to be pretty good, right? It is. Is it, is it racking it is. up the it views? Is. I haven't checked, because this is what I told people. Um, like, the animation itself, you know, while it is peak cringedom, it, it is serving the fact that everyone is talking about him, everyone is checking his channel, like, he may get subscribers from this. And by the way, if you're listening, if you're listening, I have a video game which is very similar to the stuff you like, like, please consider checking it out. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not making fun or anything. It's just like, if you like women that are clowns or... or have this aesthetic, I have them, you know? So so maybe you can do it. I, I'm just saying. I want just this saying. man, Arch. I want this man. I want him in my circle. I want him in my corner. We can we can do great things together. With his funding and, and, and my team, we can we can make something of this. Well. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So See, I, I don't mock the man. I, oh, I just yeah, no, the reason his... people are mad is because the funding was for his animated YouTube series rather than his fetish project. I mean, oh. mm. Yeah, but like, see, I, I don't make fun of the man. I, I just want to channel his energy in a positive light. I make fun of the man. You can make fun of the man if you want, but I will not. Zonta says Coach Redpill has passed from pneumonia. Of course, a Russian spy and propagandist who betrayed America dying would get Tucker Carlson and Don Jr. upset. I have seen that stuff, and I'll tell you this much. Coach Redpill didn't die from pneumonia, but he did ask for it, okay? I, I actually believe he died from pneumonia. Like, I, like, look, I, I don't I, believe I for a second that he, uh, he passed from an unfortunate illness. Whilst okay, in so you, prison. You, you don't believe that an old man with white hair inside a Ukrainian prison where the temperatures go as cold as Norway you, and they're overcrowded, you don't think that he could have gotten sick. And in a country that is in a state of war, may have been unable to provide for him with adequate healthcare. I'm sure there's a possibility, but I think the primary reason might be because he was doused in water and placed outside in the yard. <laughs> See, the so so is... you, don't think that a, you don't think that a man that's a chain smoker, that, that has been like constantly tweeting about cigarettes and, and smoking on videos, and stuff, you, you don't think that it is possible... That he got pneumonia. It is infinitely less possible than the infamous Russian propagandist in Ukrainian jail being exposed to certain uh, malpractices. Okay, here, here's what I'm basing my theory on, okay? First of all, he released a, a letter to, to one of his friends where he does say that he got sick. Uh -huh. right? Secondly, um... The Ukrainians gave him ample opportunities to try and get him to avoid prison. Like the first mm -hmm. time, he, oh yeah, he was I'm, I'm not saying he didn't ask for it. <laughs> he was told to leave the country, and then they put him under house arrest. And the reason that he got to prison is because he actually tried to flee the country, and they arrested him at the border. Yeah. So, so like that. It, 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 my point is, if they wanted to like Russia question. disappear him, Fire is why the didn't they just disappear <laughs> him? Like, like why all of this charade? Why, why not just like one day, poop his gun? Uh, well, no, because he is an American citizen. You can't just disappear an American citizen. You've got to give at least, you know, a rationale, a reason. It's a war zone, Art. People disappear in war zones all the fucking time. Not like, in he, prison, no. Like, Ukraine no, knows where he is. No, that's my point, right? Like, he wouldn't disappear in prison. It's just like, one day, he would just stop communicating. And then it's, where is he? Oh, we don't know. This this will raise far more questions than uh, than than there. Uh, to be fair, pretty good excuse as well. Like, as chat says, he died with, you know, pneumonia. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, I, and I'm very skeptical of governments, right? Like, you know but that I argue with them. European governments. Yeah, no, but like th this legitimately looks like the man could have died from pneumonia. I, I do not have a reason to disbelieve that this is the case. Now, now you want to say that he didn't get adequate medical treatment? Sure, right? Like, we, we can talk about that. We can say that, you know, it's Ukraine's responsibility to make sure that prisoners don't die from pneumonia. Like, that is also true. But I, I, I don't think that they tortured him to death. Like, there is no indication in his letters, in his emails, in his correspondence that he was getting tortured to death. Yep, and I'm sure they would have let that pass through the uh, prison security system if there was. Okay, fair point. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's like, look, sir, he's writing here about the thing we did to his butthole. Well, <laughs> let it pass. 
Uh, Gerbal Natia says, ask Dev what happened with chair number three. Details. Dev has already destroyed chair number three. He's currently sleeping on the wreckage of chair number three, as far as I'm concerned. People, people ask, like, why did they help him? Um, from what I understand, they have, like, 10,000 Russian prisoners. They're a little bit overstretched with the medical uh, staff. I mean, ah. you, you, you also have, like, doctors that have to be on the front line. We're making the World War II like... Germans excuse. Why did so many Russians die in German captivity? Too many of them. But, okay, don't you think, like, overcrowding is an issue, Arch? Yeah, no, it was. The Germans didn't have enough food for them. It's true. Right. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I would like to see how you have the nation in the state of war, Arch. So what do you prioritize first? The prisoners. Yeah, no, I, I entirely agree. <laughs> the, the, just... the logistic just wasn't prepared. Like, I, I, I'm just talking from a cynical point of view. Uh, and this is not about Coach Red Pill, by the way. Like, this is just, like, looking historically what happens to prisoners of war during during wartime, you know? But, like, sometimes, yes, I, I would say that the country is being uh, committing war crimes. But, like, what if you genuinely do not have the staff? Yeah. Like, literally speaking, if, if, if the people, if the personnel aren't there, like, what do you do? What if the war crime was actually unavoidable? But is it a crime? Yes. Is it though? Like, like yes. okay. What if you can't feed your soldiers? And as, then... uh, as far as Geneva is concerned. We need to rewrite the Geneva Convention, Arch. Carl Forever says, removing judges from dread is basically end times. Yes, it's, it's, I mean, if they have any understanding of the universe at all, this, this system will collapse horribly and it will cause, I mean, You'll have Judge Death come back or something. It's like, oh, social services is going to take care of me, are they? Well, good. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. You know what? I'm willing to change my mind because people say I have a bias because it's Ukraine. All right, fine. You know, all right, I, I will change my mind. Why would you say that he did get tortured? I don't know, Jan. I mean, just give me one reason, like, you know, like, maybe you saw a video of him and, and he was beaten up, maybe, you know, like, like why would you say, because I'm not, like, first of all, I'm telling you what I believe, like, what I personally believe, I'm not telling you what happened because I wasn't there, so, like, any anything is possible, but I personally, right, like, like find this to be plausible, I, I do believe that a person that's a chain smoker and, and is of age and uh, he's got, like, white hair and stuff, if you put him in a Ukrainian prison, he may get sick Paris during the winter the and, and get Fire pneumonia. I, I genuinely believe that is a possibility. Now, if Which you can is a ringing like... endorsement of Ukrainian prisons. Well, you should see the Romanian prisons. Holy shit. Why well, Hayton says, Hail all! U.S. intelligence reports came out revealing that China's nuke fuel tanks are full of water and half of their launch doors can't even open. Ah. That is entirely possible. But I also want to point out that, let's see, where was it here? Ah, yes, here we go. I wonder if you've heard this piece of news, uh, V. Let me put it in the streaming server link channel as well. Um, this is from the US Strategic Command on the Minuteman 3 nuclear missile. Um, we can't do it all. We can't do maintenance and all. The thing is so old, in some cases, the drawings don't exist anymore to guide upgrades. There are also no technicians who fully understand them. They're not alive anymore. <laughs> China's nuclear arsenal is probably going to shit. As is Russia's. The American As one is, the is United not much States. better. Yeah, they, I, I read that in the United States, the same problem yeah. happens. It's like... Uh, the shit's it's too old. Can you, can you imagine diversity hires being in charge of the uh, nuclear arsenal? Oh, absolutely. Like, because normally you'd, you'd assume that... See, see, this is one of the problems. I see this argument often with the whole, like, moon landing thing. It's like, we went to the moon in the 1970s. Why haven't we gone back? Our technology is so much better. Our technology is better. Our engineers sure as fuck aren't. I mean, we went to the moon with fucking gaffer tape and silver paper. We, we couldn't do that today. Like, the, the mission would cost seven times as much and be twice as likely to explode on the launch pad. Oh, I agree. And, and it's also... When I played Warhammer 40k, I was, like, so against the concept. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, so the, the humans did have the technology, but now they don't. Oh, that's so ridiculous. Now I'm starting to fucking believe that is possible. Yeah. 
Yeah. But ironically, I, I do think, like, okay, so like there was a golden age where people actually did shit. Yeah. But now due to bureaucracy, due to like the religion of the woke and all that shit, like we literally cannot do what was done in the past. Yeah. It, unironically, that, that is actually correct the case. And um, I wanted to get through the excited. We had a couple of $50 soup chats. I want to say thank you. And I'll say thank you now. Thank you very much. But this is actually leading me beautifully into the... Uh, the big topic of today, the the boying thing, our big topic, the funny big topic, because nobody got hurt. It's, it's fine to laugh at it, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Elon mm. Musk came out and says Boeing prioritized diversity and inclusion over flyer safety, and you know what? He's fucking correct because it yes. turns out that let me see here, let me find it. So the the people who made the doors, who made the door seals, etc., and you know made the the plug and all of that around it. Uh, they were complaining that Boeing didn't take up enough like tests. They didn't check it correctly. They, the, the manufacturer was worried that Boeing hadn't installed the doors correctly. Okay. Red flag numero uno. Uh, red flag numero dos. There was a warning light that came on three times in three previous flights saying, Hey! Cabin pressure is a bit of a problem here. You know what they did, V? They turned the fucking light off. I mean, it was bothering them, right? Yeah, it was you bothering know, you can them. Put a little bit of, <laughs> you, you can put a little bit of duct tape over the light, and it's like that there. You know, straight up, the you first know, first tape it came on, the light was like, hey, cabin pressure. And they was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Shut up. Do you, know, do, do you know that's kosher light? Uh, uh, the, like, literally, you are not allowed to touch the light switch, but you can put a little duct tape over it. <laughs> I'm not kidding! Like, there, there's TikTok videos with that. Yep. And so they, they yeah. brought on a technician. The technician looked at the light and went like, oh, oh that's benevolent. That's, that's fine. And so they reset the warning. Next flight, light comes on again. Like, hey, seriously, cabin pressure, though. So they landed it, and they turned off the fucking light. Third time, light goes, no, actually, they landed. And this time, they put in place a restriction so the plane couldn't fly over water. So that's something, right? It couldn't crash into the Atlantic or the Pacific. That's good. But again, they turned off the fucking light. And then the cabin pressure did indeed fall rather drastically. You know what they could have done? Uh, do, you know, do you know like what what, what 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 a what a no like what a proper smart engineer would do from Harvard? They what? they could just disable the light arch. <laughs> they disable it once and for all. <laughs> like I've disconnected it, it the a, lights. Like you you can you can tell that these people were diversity have, hires because lost. they would just turn off the light. Like a real smart engineer would have just opened the air, the, the the cockpit and then disabled the light, make sure that it never turns on again. Yep, they just have turned it off properly. So, so what happened when the cabin lost pressure? Uh, well, very little, because, see, aircrafts are actually designed to deal with this shit. Like, that's why the chairs are bolted to the fucking floor, etc. It is to try to avoid people getting swooped out when this happens. This is why they're so anal about you keeping your seatbelt on, etc. Like, there is actually a point to the seatbelt, you know? What is the point to the seatbelt? Oh, so you don't fly and hit your head on top? Uh, it's in no no because when this happens, all of the pr all of the atmosphere that is inside the aircraft is Pass going to go question. outside Fire the aircraft. The <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, that means sh suck a very very big suck. And if you are not I like affixed yes. to your seat, you will go outside the hole. That is not good. And this comes in the wake of mass Boeing diversity initiatives. Um, Did you think? Course. Do you think they go like brace, brace, brace? Is that a thing or? They, is they, it like, they're... please remain calm? <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming they did. Yeah, like, please chill out. It's just a hole in the aircraft, bro. Uh, I, I will tell you something else that I heard from one of my subscribers that was a pilot. He basically also said that during COVID, since they pressured pilots to um, vaccinate, a lot of the older pilots were like, fuck it, like you're being disrespectful right now, and they quit. And instead of them, they got, like, the fresh new faces from the academia. Yep. And so uh, they, they've they managed to include their diversity and representation. They've poured money into it. You know, they're measuring their percentages. Like, we've got this many women. We've got this many blacks and Latinos. Look at this. Isn't it amazeballs? And 
and Betty yet V. They're also taking proactive measure to fire the bad people. The people who point at the blinking light and go, it's not supposed to do that. You know what this reminds me of? What? I'll tell you a funny story that happened. Question. I don't know if you know Fire about it, but the there's answer. like the submarine, <laughs> right? And it, and it went down to see the Titanic. And there were like, like the, the person who invented the submarine, like, like he tried the innovative way of building it that no one thought about it before. Uh, and, and when he got like those cisgender heteronormative white engineers, uh, they were pointing out that there's some structural problems with the submarine. The and he was like, no. submarine, yes. Yeah, it's like, no, this is 2023. You guys don't know shit. I need to get some rich diversity over here. So he got students from the academia. Arch. And the students were like, oh, yeah, the sub is perfectly fine. I mean, absolutely good to go. Yep. But it wasn't good to go, Arch. Oh. It got people killed. No, uh, oh, my. I have, I have lost. Oh, my. Okay, Bucky. A little that? Bucky Buck just sent me a message here. Mm. I'll put this in there. Uh, apparently, the black box flight recorder has been erased. Wow. How, how, how weird. How unfortunate. What, is, what a mysterious set of circumstances. How could this have happened? By the way, there's another video. This one is even funnier. It shows a woman uh, who's a flight controller. And she's talking to a pilot. And she's basically saying that uh, the pilot is doing the landing incorrectly. And the pilot is saying, it's like, I I've been a pilot for 50 years. Like, this is how it's done. And she's like, no, no, no. I googled it. Service guarantees citizenship. The I'm cockpit voice recorder was completely overwritten. There was nothing on the cockpit voice recorder. So nothing was recorded. Brilliant. What do you think they would have said? Did it, do you think like he, he blasphemed against answer. diversity? <laughs> Well, no, I'm... Uh, I don't think so. I think this was the that damn light came and complaining about the cabin pressure <laughs> blinking again. I'll turn it off. Do you think it's a psyop so that people don't fly planes anymore? Uh, no, I, I think I think this is legitimately diversity, equity, and inclusion. I, I legitimately yes, but... think that this is just what happens when you hire legitimately inferior people based on qualifications to positions they're not qualified for like you're like okay what's your no, skin no, no, color? i Black. i, I, I okay, get that good. i get that but like listen if you if you wanted the psyop so people don't <laughs> fly planes is there a better way to do it like can you think of a better way to do it than this one yes how you'd crash the plane you'd crash the plane but like arch what if 2024 isn't over yet that's true. 2024 <laughs> isn't over yet. <laughs> they could crash another plane. It's entirely possible. <clears throat> but this seems to have been just a pure DEI error. Like, you, you've got reports of multiple instances of warnings. You've got the people making the plug going, seriously, you're, n you're not doing this right. And then you have the flight recorder being mysteriously overwritten. Like, bullshit. Absolute fucking bullshit. There are like many stories that are on 4chan, so they can't be verified. But it, like many people who worked at Delta, they're, they're saying it's like, all right, well, I got this person in my team. He couldn't do anything. So, you know, we just get him to do Excel files and stuff, like just keep him out of the way, which is still great. I mean, you get paid a, an excellent amount of salary and you're just doing Excel files, right? But but then, like, the new boss gets switched around, and the new boss is diversity as well, so they're now promoting the Excel guy to be your boss. Mm -hmm. and, and many people, like, even if they don't get fired, they quit out of spite. It's like, I've been working here for, like, so many years, and now you're going to promote the guy that knows less than me. Like, yeah. I, I got no respect for this boss, so I'm out. There's also the fact that um, Boeing very quietly deleted an advertisement on their site championing the diversity of the engineering team right after this happened. I, mm. Boeing, Boeing knows why this happened. Boeing was very, very aware of why this happened. Yeah, but like, I, I, I genuinely wonder, um, do they not feel concerned? Like, like, if I was in charge of Boeing, I would be like, holy shit, okay. Well, the public is now outraged about diversity. This is happening. Like, what if a plane does crash? Well, that would require them to plan ahead, frankly. 
Which I don't think they're no, but going like they, to. They must, they must have... Well, as you say, it's like they know what happened, right? Like It, it doesn't require planning ahead to, to use your brain and say, well, all right, but like, why did this happen? And what... So, so one of the things that I noticed is that what they do is if you talk about it now, you're fear-mongering, you're, you know, like you're crazy, you're, you're just a bigot. And if you talk about after the plane crashes, it's like, oh, you're, you're feeding off a tragedy, uh, you're profiting from tragedy, et cetera, et cetera. Like, like there is no way that you can say, well, this is a problem. It needs to stop so people don't die, right? Like if you talk before it is bad, if you talk after it is bad. Yep. But this is because of the political aspect of it. They don't want to stop doing it because they're worried that if they stop doing it, they'll be canceled. That's why. And they, they're worried about the right canceling them too. Well, uh, we'll do a few more Super Chats and we'll get to that too because there's been massive layoffs in almost every part of the entertainment and the woke industry, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, adherent of Lady Columbia. Funny, overpopulation is a confirmed myth. The better your society, the better individual children you could produce. No one wants bulk number of kids. <laughs> bulk number. Uh, Mr. Sergeant 100, an arch stream after a Saturday shift. How fortuitous. Enjoying Rogue Trader while you and V ramble on. Give an update on Taiwan when you can. We are going to be talking about Taiwan today as well because uh, they did have an election and China was not pleased. Mark Chen well, says uh, 12 Fahrenheit in Seattle. Minus 10 and it's a sunny day. That's not too bad. Minus 10 is pretty good. That's pretty okay. The Mint, $50 or 500 Norwegian kroners. Hey, Arch. Fellow Norwegian here. How do you feel about our Justice Minister wanting to make it a criminal offense to be influenced by an opinion loosely defined as coming from a foreign state actor? In other words, any opinion the government doesn't like. I think it's a very, very bad idea. And it's yet more panic-mongering after the whole, like, Trump was a Russian puppet thing, which was proven to not be true. It is impossible to not be influenced by foreign actors if by the definition of foreign actors you mean posts on social media. Because that was all the Russian influence was. It was fucking bot farms in Macedonia going like, eh, Russia good. It's, it's even more than that, right? Like, do you, do you remember um, when the, the 2016 elections happened? Like, like, there were mainstream media publications in Britain talking against Trump. And you're wondering, like, why do they do that? And the reason they do that is to create the illusion that there's so many people against him. Right? So you go on the internet and it's like, everyone is like, oh, Trump's a fascist, Trump's a fascist. And then you look at it, it's like, well, this guy is from Britain. Why, why the fuck is he saying that? Like, does he follow <laughs> American politics? Does he? No, it's because his media told him to say Paris that, right? And now he's another Fire data the point <laughs> in the Trump's a fascist crowd. Yep, it's the same in Norwegian news as well. They're constantly talking about Trump and how everyone's so worried. Oh, God, if Trump wins, if Trump wins, ah! Yeah, so isn't that election interference? No, because that's good election interference. Mm. Election interference is only when it interferes with the Democrats. Uh, Mr. Luckless, I'm getting real tired of modern deism tainted what should be a fictional setting, especially one set several centuries in the future. You'd think we'd have newer problems to deal with by then. Well, we do. We have the Apocalypse War. We have aliens. We have Judge Death. We have all of these cool things, but we can't be bothered by that. We gotta worry about whether or not we're policing correctly. Apparently, I just got this uh, new social nationalist BSW party is on the rise in Germany. Well, what does social nationalist mean? I don't know. It sounds a lot like nationalist socialism. Yeah, but no, this is socialist nationalist. Yeah, that's the other one of and, national socialism, I guess. And apparently it, it's got like 4% or uh, according to other accounts, 14%. Hmm. I'm sure it will grow uh, rapidly. <laughs> and I mean, it, everyone is... will be very surprised. A mess hold for $50 as well. Thank you very much, sir. So, Arch, can't stay, but a quick little question. Could Gene Stealer cults take over a night house and the Imperial Knights given enough time? Yes. Um, the problem would be the, knights it, the knight itself would probably reject the taint. So you'd be virtually impossible to bond with the knights. Unless the Gene Stiller cult has some way of rewriting the knights' neural programming, which is possible, but difficult. 
as the knights themselves also have their consciousness, and they plunge the con consciousness of anyone who plugs into them, so they would know. Uh, Mr. Luckless, V, you hack. You always talk about your game, but you never name it. Are you ever going to tell us the name of this theoretical game? No. 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 Because it's banned by YouTube TOS, that's why. I mean, theoretically it is. I, I haven't seen channels being banned, but I don't want to do it on Arch's channel. I have. I, I, hell, you know a guy who's had his channel, man. Like, uh, Bob and uh, those guys had a channel for yeah, promoting but that was their like stuff. A yeah, but it was a channel completely dedicated to it. Like, it had no other content. It was, like, 100% dedicated to it, so. It is what it is. I, I, again, I, I don't want to get Arch's channel in trouble. Artemis Fowl says, Can't wait for the case of Unalive, of Coach, to state that his newly discovered broken ribs resulted from CPR after he passed out from, from pneumonia. You know, like in med school, we actually are told that a CPR that doesn't broke one rib is not a CPR that was done properly. Yeah, no, I, I know. Because yeah, you, you do yeah. got to do it with a lot of pressure. I'm just saying, what, the, what is the <laughs> most likely explanation here? Oh, this is going to turn into another Devian election debate at that point. Uh, Sleazy, as Arch, when are you going to stream with Legal Mindset? He's been wanting to stream with you for a while. Uh, when he contacts me and asks, I guess. See, I don't know about these people. I, I, I watch very little YouTube. Zero YouTube. So if there's people who want to stream with me, well, uh, they should just send me a message. I'm open to it. I'm mean, open to talking to all kinds of people. Uh, but I cannot intuit their existence, tragically enough. Uh, Gabriel Lottier, V, what were the Dark Ages, technology-wise? Yeah, V. Why, in the Imperium or in real life? No, our time. I mean, the Dark Age of Hollywood, we're living through it. Like, there is absolutely nothing that's coming that I would say I would watch in 20 years from now. We're, we're not in the Dark Ages yet. Like... The, we're in the decline. Like, our golden age has ended. Like, our golden age probably ended four or five years ago. Because we had a period there of absolutely unbelievable progress uh, of technology, of society, of rights, of wealth, of standard of living. Like, un unmatched in human history. And now, now we get to see how far down we get to go. It is unfortunate, yeah. But I, look, look at the video gaming industry, right? You have video games that don't work on launch, that like that destroy studios, like Forspoken, like Gollum, like uh, Redfall, like all of them in one year, and and the other ones aren't so good. I mean, for fuck's sake, you know, people keep saying, "Oh, Baldur's Gate three one game of the year," and it's like that says a lot about the games of that year, doesn't it? It does. Like to be fair, Baldur's Gate three was a fantastic first act, a serviceable, if long, second act, and then a very clearly designed by somebody completely different third act. That is what uh, a lot of people say. It's like, well, Bandersgate Gate had pronouns. I, I got their pronouns. And, and yet it is a good game. He heals versus babyface. He knows nothing. He doesn't understand the mysticism of the pronoun. And I'm like, okay, but like, if you look at Baldur's Gate 3, right, when it comes out, doesn't have pronouns, right? And then the developers say that they change the entire development team during production. So you have Act 1, which is amazing. Act 2, which, as you said, is serviceable. Act 3, I couldn't fucking run it, Arch. I had to stop playing the game until they patched that shit. Like, I it, and, I, and I got, like, a really good gaming rig. But, but it was failing to load characters it was crashing constantly and if you don't believe me it's like oh v you're making it up go, go on fucking steam the forums are still up and they still talk about that shit yeah and there weren't that many like it's it's been a while like okay so the console peasants will crow on about like uh zelda being great like okay fair enough uh for for our P us pc people it's Baldur's Gate was probably the highlight of the year, like... Have you played Robocop Rogue City? Yeah, but it's not, like, game of the year, but, like, it's it's sad, because it's just a basic bit shooter, but that's but, kind of way, laudable they, in and of itself. Did they not ban uh, Hogwarts from, from participating in the competition? 
They might have, yeah. Um, yeah, because if that's the case, then is game of the year really game of the year? Like, first yeah. of all, I will tell you this, you know, all of these fuckers that are like, oh, you don't understand. You can't say this woman is ugly. It is subjective, V. I have this subjective. I, I fucking love me some Abby. I fucking love me some Abby. Abby, Abby is the goth waifu. They, okay. If beauty is subjective, how can you give a video game award to art? How can, you, how can you say, right, it's subjective, you can't do it. So in that case, Game of the Years are just extended marketing campaigns. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, Armored Core 6 was good, you know, especially if you like that sort of stuff. I haven't played it. It's, it's not is bad. It like, is it like Dark Souls? No. Uh, it, it, I don't want kind of yes and kind of no. Like, I, it's very almost puzzle-based, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, mm -hmm. Diablo 4 was in the almost plot. Oh god. I I wish I wish I could go back in time when Diablo 2 came out and tell people that Diablo 4 was gonna be an enormous flop. Like, could you could could people believe that? Like, no, 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 no. They, like, no, no. <laughs> Blizzard is known for being a shit company in the future. What? No, 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 no. They, they are. Like they release basically nothing. War Warcraft 3 is gonna be bad. Where I when I come from, like, can you imagine the shock on their face? So, so I could believe. Yes, I can believe. Like Diablo 4 is bad. I, I would be like, okay, maybe they fucked it up. But like, if you told me that they're fucking everything up, I would be like, no. Yep. It's like what they they don't want sexy women in the game. Like Diablo 1 had naked succubus in the game. It's like hold on a little bit. It's like what? Why, why would they not? It's like, doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. I mean, the, the Blizzard is renowned for sexy characters. They got Jaina, they got Alex Straza, they got even Sylvanas, which is an undead, can be beautiful looking. And they're like, no, 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 they're making her into a man. Like, look, uh, this is the poster. For the, what? They get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she's got a jawline that you would want to have. They, they gave her an extra chromosome. Do you feel like there's so many chromosomes in California, Arch, that they have to give them to fictional video game characters? Is that it? Probably. Because I, 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 like, they're overflowing with chromosomes in California, yeah. And it's like, okay, and, and a chromosome for Jaina, and a chromosome for Silvana, and a chromosome, eh? Well, uh, five for Abby. Okay, this actually leads us on to the, uh, the gaming crash one fairly well. So... I'm sure you've been seeing a bit of this as well. There's been a lot of layoffs happening, and uh, we're, we're only like 13 days into 2024. And by my count, we've seen about 3,000-odd people being fired uh, from, uh, from Discord, from Amazon, from Twitch, from gaming studios. Um, actually, it's probably more like 4,000, because another 1,000 people were fired from Unity as well. And in the entirety of 2023, 7,000 people have fired. And we're up to 4,000 now. Like, this year is going to be a fucking massacre. But do you know uh, what they're blaming it on? What are they blaming it on? I'm basically saying that... Um, holy shit. All right, I'll show you something else after this. Uh, they're saying that uh, they grew too much during the pandemic. Ah, I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard that from Twitch, which is really funny because you remember during the pandemic, everyone was complaining like, oh, my God, it's so hard on us. We're having a hard time. Give us money. And it turns out that the pandemic was fucking boom time for a lot of these people, for game companies, for entertainment, for streaming services. I mean, the, the pandemic was a gold rush yeah like i never i never understood the thing it's like oh well we released this movie on netflix during the pandemic and because of that the numbers were low and i'm like what nani what what, what do, that, that, how does that make sense it's like people stay at home they they, they watch movies you know a uh, games workshop was the same thing during the pandemic they were complaining in their uh their fiscal statements like oh that darn pandemic how oh, it's it's really hurting our sales uh, by the way sales are up 400 percent because Nobody has anything to do but stay at home painting miniatures. You know what that is, Arch? What I just linked to? Uh, no. Little Amal puppet. You've never heard of Little Amal? No. So Little Amal is a puppet that they took to the United Nations just to see how childish those people are. It's one of the most freaky and, and one of the most creepy things. Like, can you imagine having that in your garage? Jesus fucking Christ. 
So so they they try to travel it. I think like from the Mexican border all the way to the UN on foot. I mean, they obviously took like a boat or something at some point. But like, they they, they had like this art performance, right? And, and now they're they're traveling it to London in order to support, um, I, I guess like Palestine. And the question is like, well, why don't they travel it to Palestine? And the answer is because the creators are a gay couple from South Africa. Ah, so they'd be thrown off buildings. That's unfortunate. Well, you I know, don't know, like if you, would, I, I don't think they would throw that thing off a bill. It is so fucking creepy. Can you imagine it flying like that? That would be just no. But ironically, it's not. A, it's not like a nightmarish doll. Fuck it, I'll put it no, in my they, game. They'd it probably just set it. fire to the doll, but they'd throw the couple off a building. Allah demands it, and if Allah demands it. Allah How did they it. do that punishment in medieval time? Because they didn't have tall buildings back then. Well, you don't need a very tall building to kill a person. Yeah, but like even so, with like medieval architecture, it's like maybe the palace would work, but like... They also used cliffs. You know, an analog solution. Oh, that is... The... Oh, so like they used cliffs before, and now it's... Okay, I get it. Yeah, there's not as many cliffs around anymore. No, but like, why don't they do them now? Still, I mean. Well, they they use cliffs now too. If they have, oh, they, they do. Have to. I see. I see. Like the point is, throw them off a tall place, <laughs> not necessarily a building. What if you're in a plain area? Like, if if you're in an area that has like lush green grass, you find and a there's tree. Like no... It's actually difficult to get a person to to climb them up a tree and then throw them. I don't know about that. If they're scared enough. What if, what, if, what if it's like the savannah arch? What if, what if it's like there's, there's no tall trees, there's nothing. It's like just, just grass, and maybe you have like some, you know, like buildings that aren't very tall? I believe then they'll just use the alternative Islamic punishment, which is burying you up until your head and then throwing rocks at you until you stop wiggling. Even like that, that seems like a different punishment. Like the sensation is different. Eh. Mm. I imagine the Islamic scholars can find reasons for it. I don't know. I think even the Islamic scholars would be like, hold on, like one one is like of a different like first of all, the crime is different. And, and secondly, like the punishment, what if it doesn't fit the crime, Arch? Doesn't matter. Mm. God will know. Speaking of God knowing, what I also found quite funny, the uh the culture wars represent one of the biggest business risks in 2024. Because this this is the real reason for the layoffs right here. Because the layoffs aren't happening because some companies grew too much. The layoffs are happening because they can't actually sell shit anymore. That's that's why this is happening. And I don't. Yeah, go on. The uh, but the past year has also shown how courts, elected officials, and activists can punch back against corporate initiatives they disagree with. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis attacked Disney after it opposed the state's parental rights in education law. Seven attorney generals from the red state target ordered to remove specific Pride Month merchandise. So what are the companies going to have to do, V? Well, they're going to have to leave these states, aren't they? The thing is, though, like, the, all they have to do is to stop being political. Like, like if yes. you have to sell beer, right, there, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever that your commercial should be anything else besides someone drinking and enjoying beer. Yes, and this is the thing with the culture wars right now. The left has taught the right that the most effective way of changing a corporation's mind is to boycott the corporation. It is to hurt it in the eyes of the public and thus hitting it in the pocketbook. Like this is the modern day equivalent because boycotting company by yourself does nothing. Boycotting a company with your hundred closest friends does nothing. Making a company out to be a fucking monster making it cringe to even consider purchasing their product, like with Bud Light, that has an effect. And the richest part of this is that now companies are afraid of being cancelled by the right. Oh no, right-wing cancel culture, V. It's finally here. And it's also interesting because it's different than left-wing cancel culture. Like, left-wing cancel culture, it's top-down. It's like you got an institution, right? And they're saying, uh, oh, Cloudflare refuses to do business with you, so fuck you and your website. Even if you have, like, millions of people that want to hear you, like, you can just have the company go, like, nope. Right? Nope. Um, yeah, like, for example, you can be a beer company. There, there was, like, Ultra Beer or something. Like, it was, like, a, a right-wing beer company. And they just couldn't find suppliers. 
Because they're like, nope, we're not doing business with you. Even though, like, they had customers, even though, like, they, they would sell and they would make quite a profit, it was like, nope, you're heretical, right? Uh, meanwhile, like, the way the right boycotts, it's like the average customer just doesn't buy it. Yeah. Like, and most of the time, it's not even organized. It's like, well, no. By the way, do you know McDonald's is getting boycotted? Uh, by who? By Middle Eastern nations. Well, that's normal. They sided with Israel. Yeah, they but gave, that's normal. They, yeah, they gave... No, but, like, the CEO of McDonald's is upset, and he's like, oh, but, you know, we're hiring locals. And I'm like, yeah, and if you go bankrupt, they'll go to local businesses. I mean, duh. But the thing is, um, they decided to go out of their way to have, like, this, this big campaign where they gave, like, uh, hamburgers to Israeli soldiers. And again, it's like, well, why do you do that? Like, what? You don't have to do that. Like, you, like, why? Why is a why is a fast food company involved anywhere near war? Like, you should you shouldn't even bring it up. You shouldn't like unless unless you're in Gaza and you have like your McDonald's there. That then, then then maybe that particular place, well, right? Like, it's it's because these companies have adopted the wokest idea of ab moral absolutism. Like, that's the thing. They believe that there is such a thing as the absolute moral good that must be lauded by everyone. And this absolute moral good can differ, but they, they, they think there's an answer to the question that'll be universally acceptable, right? So McDonald's thinks like, oh, Israel. Israel, good, because we're an American company. So this must be universally acceptable, right? And then forget, oh, shit, we're also a global company. And no, the, the, see, here's the thing. The Muslims don't dislike Israel. They're not, they're not like, oh, those, those damn little Jews, ha, 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 ha. No, no, they're actually like, oh, we're going to need to genocide you. We're, we're actually going to need to. We, are, we actually mean it when we say we're going to wipe them out. That, that is the Muslim point of view. And so, yes, when you make an advertisement that is specifically pro-Israel, pro they're going to be very upset with you. Uh. It's like, well, we're supporting local businesses because, like, we employ a lot of... And, yeah, and if you go bankrupt, where do you think the Muslims are going to go? By the way, it has got us so bad. Like, I, I definitely heard this argument that they're not wrong. That the price of a McDonald's right now is almost the same like just going out and eating at a regular restaurant and you eat much better food at a fancier place. Uh, is it? I don't know. Like, there's, like, three McDonald's in the entirety of my nation. So, I've let me see. Well... I guess. I mean, if you don't go there, like, like the thing with McDonald's is, it was used to be that Let's it was very see. cheap, right? Yeah, let's figure it uh, out. Like Big someone, Mac. someone did six hundred yeah, like, like, calories. Yeah, take a Big Mac menu. I'm right, trying so like, to. Uh, I'm trying to actually figure out here. Add, add the French fries, Arch. Add the drink. Aren't they? Where's the fucking prices? Are they? They're hiding my prices. Order now. DoorDash. Okay. Why don't they list the prices? I just want to know. Minneapolis. About our food. Well, Smiling woman like, ha ha ha. French fries, good. It's cheaper to eat at uh, Disney than at McDonald's, said someone in the chat. I don't, I don't think that's the case. Hmm. It won't tell me what McDonald's you know what? prices I'll, I'll are. Ask... Hold on, I'll ask ChatGPT. I'll, I'll ask ChatGPT. I'll figure it out. Oh, there we go. This one's a bit more properly. Okay. Uh, let's see. Screw the breakfast. Individual items. Bacon, egg, cheese, okay. biggers. Oh, here we go. Okay. A double cheeseburger. What was the, what was the double cheeseburger? No, a Big Mac. Yeah, right. So using Bing, how much is the average cost for a Big Mac menu in Romania? Uh, the Big Mac is six dollars. Uh, seven dollars for the bacon Big Mac. Ten dollars for the Big Mac Big Mac meal. I don't know. You 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 do not eat a Norwegian restaurant for ten dollars. Not a chance. You do at the Romanian one, right? And this is about Muslim countries. Yeah. And I assume it's the same over there. Possibly. Uh, so, so in Romania, in Romania, it's eight dollars, right? With eight dollars, you eat one course meal at a restaurant in Romania, and, and we're talking like fancy places. We're not talking about you know like poverty. 
at my one course meal, I mean, you don't order any drinks. You don't you don't have like anything else besides like one item on the menu. And you can choose from like the medium range prices as well. So a cola is a dollar. Okay. Uh, let's see. A cola is a dollar. Fries, medium fries is like three dollars. So, and the Big Mac was like, let's say seven. So seven, ten, eleven, Fire ten, eleven, answer. twelve dollars for a meal. Yeah, you you do you do not eat at Norway for ten, twelve dollars. Mm. Not a chance. Yeah, well, not not at Norway, but like in other places where they have McDonald's, you do. Um, so like it, it used to be around five or six dollars back in 2016. Like it was something. Oh, I remember. Like there was an option, the combo they called it. You got one sandwich and a pack of fries for one dollar. Yep, this I remember was that. In 2014, I think. We used to have something called like the uh, 10, 10 kroner menu, which was 10 kroners for a burger. So one, $1 roundabout. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, the prices have increased by about times six at that point. By the nomics. Yep. You know that uh, I, I genuinely think, and I'm, a, I'm going to upset your, your chat, but like imagine if Trump doesn't win. And we get four more years of not Biden, because I don't, I don't think Biden will, will run. I, I, I definitely think that he's going to say, oh, due to health reasons, I'm stepping down. And you're probably going to get Newsom or, or someone like that. Can you imagine, like, four more years of the fuckery arch? Can you, can you... Four more years of inflation. And yeah. an, at least one more massive war in all due likelihood. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I hope not. It'll be, uh, it'll be unfortunate. Uh, especially yeah, I as so. also, I, I want to point out as one one thing here as well. If the so culture the wars are the biggest businesses in 2024, like the culture wars are escalating because the right has finally figured out what to do. Like it's taken a decade, but the right as a movement has now figured out how to use cancel culture. It's figured out how to use propaganda and it's figured out how to lie as well. And I don't approve of the latter part, but I see the necessity and I see what it's fucking coming from. Meaning that the, um, the unemployment rate is going to increase. So our economy is spiraling downwards, even as, as the employment rate in the biggest industry on the fucking planet, entertainment, is also going downwards. And we're looking at another supply crisis because, of course, what's happening in the Middle East right now? Oh, that's right. A bunch of crazy Muslims have started shooting at ships again. Speaking of ships, Arch, I yeah. I want to ask you something, right? Like, like, uh, hold on. Um, can you tell me what class of ship this is? Because because you already get like that that person in the chat that's asking me stuff. So so I want to ask you now. What what is that? Arch? Uh, it's a helicopter carrier. How the fuck do you know it's a helicopter carrier? No 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 fucking way. There, that is not a helicopter carrier, Arch. It's a it's an airplane carrier. No, it's, it's a helicopter, helicopter carrier. carrier. Do you know how no, I know? No, you can lodge because yeah. it doesn't have a fucking runway. I have, I have lost. You, you don't think you can uh, launch planes from that? No, it doesn't have a fucking runway, V. Doesn't have a runway. Do, don't you think like you can modify it a little bit? No. Okay, V. So I know you're retarded, and I forgive you, but there are a few, there are a few things that a carrier needs. One of them is a catapult to launch the aircraft off the very short distance. This does not have a catapult. Another is arrestor wires to actually stop the aircraft when they're trying to land on the thing. This does not have arrestor wires either. Another big hint for why this is a helicopter carrier are the helicopters <laughs> on board. Okay, so this is, this is actually uh, built by Japan. Um, they have two of them. Now, according to their constitutions, they're not allowed to have aircraft carriers. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a helicopter carrier, wink, wink. But... According to my sources, it can be modified to be an aircraft carrier in the case of a war. It would it would need some serious refitting. Um, you would need to... I can't quite see if the front is raised, but you'd need to add a ramp to the front. I mean, you could carry Harriers and VTOL aircraft. Uh, you'd have to modify a catapult onto it with all of the hydraulics necessary theoretically sure, but, like, think... but it would be hell <laughs> sure but like if you, if you actually have the ship like you already invested the resources in making the ship 
Do you think you do not have the resources and technology in order to invest it into having the airplanes? I, I don't think they'd need to. It's like, okay, you could refit these at enormous expense and time, and they could probably carry 10, 15 VTOL aircrafts total, maybe. Um, or you could just go like, oh, Daddy America, Daddy America. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but like I, I do think like the Japanese probably want to move away from their constitution of uh, not being able to have a military. Oh yeah, uh, like Japan is absolutely heading in the the direction of having the Dai Nippon Tekogurikugun once more. The the Dai Nippon Tekogurikugun. Yes. Service guarantee citizenship. But what does that the Dai Nippon Tekogurikugun? Greater Empire of Japan. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Yes. But, like, who, who will they uh, fuse in the empire? Like, do, do you think, like, they will go for South Korea or China? Or... I'm I'm hoping they try the Sino-Japanese War Round 3. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm not familiar with the second one. I, I haven't seen the sequel. Uh, the second one was the one that was was before and during the Second World War. Oh, I yes. see. That didn't go well for them. No, it dragged out a bit. It did. It, it, did uh, it ended up with the current constitution that they're having. Right now, they don't have an army. Yes, they have yes, the uh, Jietai, yes, which literally means self-defense force. Um, and it's it's sort of an army. It's just that they don't get to have anything fun. You know, They're basically America's little puppet military over there that America can use as a nice little shield in case of war. Do you think that America would Ukrainianize them in the case of a Chinese conflict and just like give them equipment and let them throw themselves at the Chinese? Quite possibly, but I don't think they would need to. I, I think if America just lets Japan off the leash, Japan will take care of that itself. Like, the Japanese are naturally bloodthirsty. It is interesting that um, during uh, the... Uh, like, if you look at the American system, the MAGA people would support Japan having a bigger navy because the MAGA people are like, we want to come back home, so, like, we don't want to be the world police. So it's like, yeah, you know, let Japan have its shit. Sure. Yeah. But I'd prefer it if America was the world police because it's a lot cheaper for everybody else. It is cheaper for the European Union. It, it, it is better, though. Like, can you imagine if the European Union gets its own army? Holy shit. Well... Good. You you want the Germans to have their army back, Arch? Why the fuck not, V? Like it's worked out so well every time before. We need we clearly need to learn the lesson a third time. Didn't they park their tanks into Norway last time? Nah, they're not gonna be bothered with bothering with us anymore. I don't think. Hopefully, Do you have oil. Will. Do Do you have oil? Yeah, but the Brits are gonna bomb that long before the Germans do. You need to pick us up. Well, actually, that would be interesting. Yeah, no, we don't need to, because during the Second World War, both the British and the Germans were planning to invade us. It's just the Germans got here first. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I, I, I genuinely hope we're not going to see another war in our lifetime, to be honest. Oh, we're going to see several wars in our lifetime. Well, when I say war, I mean, like, things that have nukes and shit, like... Preferably oh, no, not. No, not nukes, but we've we already got the uh, the 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 Hittites, as I like to call them, the Hittites in the Middle East, right? The Houthis. The and Houthis. You, you will notice. Okay, do you know anything about the Hittites? They are sponsored by Iran, and they are not recognized as being uh, anything besides like a, a terrorist group. Sort of, yes. So, one of the funny things about the Hittites, and I'm going to keep calling that because I, I don't like pronouncing Houthi, and Houthi is a dumb, dumb word, mm. is that they are, they, they are Shia Muslims. They are. Yeah, yeah they're, they're with the Iranians, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the Saudi Arabians are Sunnis, yeah. They don't like each other. That's pretty rare. The, the Shia Muslims have, were usually the more, like, downbeat ones. But, uh... Recently, with Iran, as you mentioned, the Shias have gotten a little bit more aggressive. And what's other funny things is, do you know how the Hittites uh, started, like, infiltrating uh, Yemen and beginning to get, like, a populist movement going? No. They did it via academia, V. Oh. 
Anyway, you build the academia, yes, yes, and, and you 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 lower the level of violence. That is correct. The level of crime that you know, like, like it is interesting because the academia just labels stuff that is crime. They label it as not crime. So like yes. you're not committing crimes anymore. Yeah. Yes, they they infiltrated the academia, and then they started saying things like women's rights, V. Uh, do you know that they caused rebellions in Afghanistan? I am sure so, they so, did. So like one of. Yeah, like one of America's policy in Kabul, uh, well, it came from the universities of Kabul. It, it was, um, we need to have diversity in, in elections, right? Mm -hmm. So then we had like women being elected in, in a very patriarchal society. And many of them didn't even know their constituents. Like they were literally just placed there because it's like, well, it's the first female Afghanistan. There riots everywhere. Um... Tucker Carlson talked about that. Yep. And this has been going on for a very long time. So the Hittites have like uh, women's, women's organizations and women's security forces and all kinds of stuff, which they used as the, the thin wedge to begin peeling away support from the Yemeni government. And the Yemeni government are no good guys either. They're an Islamist state. I mean, <laughs> let's, let's be honest here. But this civil war has been going on since like 2010 or something. Like This has been dragging on forever. And nobody has cared. Not a single soul has looked at this place and gone, Oh, they're killing each other. How terrible. But then the Hittites were like, We're going to shoot your boats. And suddenly, the largest carrier group since the second fucking world war. Since... Oh, right, right more like uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom, is just chilling off their coasts, bombing the shit out of them. What is the lesson we can learn from this? The lesson is that all you have to do is to look at history and, and what any empire doesn't like is fucking with their trading lanes. Yes. I don't know why. I, I don't know why it bothers, but, but uh, it, like every single empire, the moment, like you can, you can get away with most things, you know, some skirmishes around the border, kidnapping some, like that, that is okay. But the moment, the moment you touch their trading place, I, I don't know what it is about that particular, that pisses empires off so fucking much. Well, it's because of costs, because we've got a downward economy. This was the point we started about like 15 minutes ago. Downward economy, mass layoffs, and now the cost of goods and services are going to increase. Because if ships, including the majority of oil shipments, mind you, can't go through the Suez Canal, they're going to have to sail all the way around Africa. Which means everything's going to get more expensive again. Fuel's going to get more expensive again. Power's going to get more expensive again. F everything. Food, fuel, uh, commercial goods, everything. You remember the, the service crisis we had during COVID when the Californian ports were backed up? It's going to be that again. And well, I hope. If that's the case, I hope America can send more ships. The benefit is, of course, like, the entire idea of the West. Like, the, the West is so nice. They're not, they're not mean. They don't commit war crimes. That goes right out the window. The moment you start shooting at boats. Boats are the sacred cow of the modern world. You start even inconveniencing shipping, and you are fucked. To be fair, though, um, they launched like seventy-four mis uh, at seventy-four targets, so I assume it's more than seventy-four missiles, and they only killed five people. Yeah, so it looks more like a warning shot. Oh, it kind of is. Like, like it will break down Armageddon on you if you don't stop that shit. They're, they're blowing up shit that the, the, that the Hittites like. Like, they're blowing up their guns and their buildings and shit. And more often than not, what the U.S. will do before they do this, else they'll actually tell them. Because there's nothing they can do to stop them. And so they'll go like, Hittites, uh, get away from coordinates <laughs> X, Y, Z. <laughs> and they... I can remember, like, Charlie, Delta, Delta, Gamma. <laughs> yep, please move. <laughs> And then they blow it up. Like, they're, so they're... Why do you think like five people died then? Did they not get the radio transmission? Or... Oh, they were the retards they thought who they... thought they wouldn't do it, I guess. <laughs> like, there, are, there are audio recordings of US forces like radioing to installations, like radar installations, and saying, in 15 minutes, we're going to blow up your outpost. <laughs> we uh, urge you to evacuate. And they do! Except for those five people. Like... 
when uh, whenever the like Iran or whoever fucks with America, and Americans decides to blow something up. That's what happens. It's a transaction. You blow up our thing, we're gonna yes. blow up your thing. Yes, I, I, I even like heard Donald Trump talk about it in his campaign. It's like, so they blew up this drone, and I was thinking, why didn't they take down the plane? Because the plane was a bigger target. But they got the drone, and we had to answer because that's what we do. We got, we got to answer. You can't let this down. You can't mm-hmm. let this down. You got to answer. So, so we blew up their installation, and we told them it's like we're going to do it. This is, yep. and they understood. We had a very good relationship with them. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, literally, unironically, <laughs> they, it is a transactional agreement. Like, because for a lot of these governments, this is actually clout. You know, whenever, whenever one of these dumbass nations sends out a speedboat to go harass local shipping, they shout at it. They shoot an RPG off the bow and go like, "Hala Akbar." That is them taking pictures for their populace they can bring back home and go like, look, we scared off the evil Americans. And America was like, yep, yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Do you know what's interesting, though? Um, the Japanese, they never encountered the Chinese in international water, do they? Like their militaries, I mean. It's, it's almost like someone keeps the fun away from each other. Because you always get, it's like, oh, th- this American naval destroyer was harassed by, like, four Chinese destroyers. And then you get, like, in the newspapers, like, German Z is wondering, why the fuck are Americans still here? And America's like, we're in international water, shut the fuck up. But, like, you, ne- you never have, like, the case where you have, like, a Japanese boat encountering, like, a Chinese military. I wonder why th- that is. Oh, it does happen. Like, they're, they're arguing over the, um, the Ryukyu Islands all the time, for example. Mm. But but both sides are keeping their fingers uh, nicely on the trigger. Now, what is going to be a little interesting is the uh, the election of I'm not even going to try to pronounce that uh, ping pong in Taiwan. Taiwan, yeah, yeah. They they uh, Chen is not happy. Apparently, the Greens, which are the anti-China party, managed to decimate the capitalist. That that's what the the Taiwanese call them, the the capitalist party. They want to capitulate. Yep. Capitulate. Yeah. The uh, Ch- Chairman Xi, as you uh, you call him so very respectfully, is not very happy yeah. about this. He called it a choice between war and peace. And you know what? That's kind of true. Because Taiwan, right? In-, in Taiwan, they they know what's going on. The problem isn't whether they want freedom or if they want to be a part of China. Because nobody wants to be a part of China. They-, they want freedom. But it's the question of, do you want freedom and the possibility of being bombed? Or do you want to be a part of China? Yeah, I mean, the thing that with Taiwan is that, uh, and I think China is aware as well, like any invasion of Taiwan is probably going to have to level the island. So like any technology that you have, have probably have gone into the dirt. Shit. Any type of personnel that you have, probably dead or fled. So, so it's more like a prestigious thing. It's like, oh, look, we got Taiwan, reunification. Um, I don't think that would happen unless... Like, Chairman Z has no option. It's like he's going to get riots in his country and he needs to, like, spur some nationalism. Um, I mean, it's a possibility. I think it's on the table. But they're, they're probably looking at it from this type of uh, thing. And, and what we could see is also a blockade. Like, they could just blockade Taiwan. Yeah, but the issue is that would be as good as war. Because Taiwan's one of the largest to microchip... Uh, producers in the world and that's the reason why they haven't because anyone fucks with taiwan that's going to be exactly the same as fucking with shipping as we just said v you fuck with the boats (laughs) you get the hose (laughs) that's why china can't just blockade them because if they do they're fucking with shipping and we know what happens if you fuck with shipping and again what I love about the whole shipping thing is the, the answer is so direct. There's no fucking about whatsoever. When the <laughs> Somalis were going against boats, they, they were little, little stupid ass boats, little like um, ra- little, little boats with single engines going up these giant ships. And they were like, no. And they started putting destroyers in the shipping lanes. And they would just blow up these boats. No, yeah, it's no, like, no when warning, it comes no to anything. refugees, it's interesting. Like when it comes to refugees, it's like, well, we can't, we can't do anything. Australia did though. Australia did do something with the refugee boats. Look at it, the news. It's probably still there. They don't talk about it. But but for some reason, Australia doesn't get refugees anymore. You, you look at what they did with the boats, you get the answer. But but like the moment you fuck with the ships, it doesn't matter. Like target, target. <laughs> You know, like, there is footage, which we're going to show on YouTube, but of, like, Black Hawk helicopters just firing miniguns at these tiny little fucking fishing vessels. 
It's like main battery cannons blowing even, them apart. Like, there's no warning. They don't even give warnings. Yeah, no. they don't. <laughs> like, you have d you've wandered into international waters, fishing vessel. Uh, we leave. No, you won't. Yeah, moving to it. Achtel 50, driving 20. You know, it's like, literally, just, you, you, you get, like, all these uh, videos. <laughs> and you're like, it's just, just like a tiny boat. Like, it's you can arrest them if you want. No. 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 <laughs> I'm sure they arrest some of them just for shits and giggles, but <laughs> they are under no like obligation time, to do so. Okay, the time they arrested them was the time when I think it was Somali pirates um, accidentally boarded a military vessel. Like, they, they thought, that it's a, thought that it's a merchant vessel. And it was carrying some merchandise, just not the time that they expected. Can you imagine that? Like you're you're boarding on a naval destroyer or something like that. <sighs> Poor little Somalis. I wonder if they knew and just allowed them to come aboard. <laughs> they probably did. <laughs> what the fuck are they doing? The best part is they just kept widening the 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 zone, the security zone too. Like, because initially, they, you had to actually get into the shipping lanes before they'd blow you to fuck. But eventually, they just started bombing any ship near the shore. So if it was in the water, it got boom. How did they identify friend or foe? They didn't. Do you think they bombed the merchant vessel as well? No. Uh, the, they identified friend and foe by size. Merchant vessel big, fishing boat small. <laughs> boom, boom, Jesus. boom. And again, like this, this is real politics when you don't add in the political nonsense. Like this is why there will be no World War Three. Okay, even if Taiwan and China kicks off, it is going to be a regional conflict, and I, I, I'm thinking it will. If Trump's in the White House, it won't kick off because nobody knows what the fuck Trump will do. Okay, if Trump gets in the White House, there's a there's a 70 to 70 30 percent chance that the war in Ukraine will end within a couple of months because nobody knows when he says to Putin like stop it or I'm gonna start bombing your nation he could do it he might actually do it that's the problem I think he would have won given the state of Ukraine and Russia of course he would like if America s starts bombing Russia there ain't shit Russia can do about it there ain't fucking shit Russia can do about it but I mean, they can cry to the United Nations. Yeah, and normally they wouldn't do that because you don't act like that in international relations, you know? You don't just start bombing Russia because you gotta keep... Because then Russia might escalate. They won't because there's no point in doing so. That's the problem with nuclear weapons. We can never actually fire any of them because the moment you do, they fail becoming deterrents and they become weapons. Like, nuclear weapons is a thing that we just literally cannot use, in essence. You know, I was actually thinking that Japan can get nukes if the conflict starts over there. Yeah, but there's very little point in it. Like, unless you're no, under direct not. threat of being invaded. Look, if Yeah, like, literally, if anything we learned from World War II is that if you don't want to be occupied, you need to have nukes. And I don't think Japan wants to be occupied ever again. So, like, they can have, like, a crash course program, and within months they can probably have nukes. If they don't have already. Possibly. And the, the issue there, too, is... Putin knows that Trump might fucking do it. And he knows <laughs> he can't stop him. So what he's probably going to do is he's going to call uh, Trump up on his little fancy phone and he's going to go like, okay, you know you got my vice in the balls. You, you know it. So let's come up with a compromise where both of us look have, great, right? Lost. You come over here and you be Trump, like bloviate, postulate, like, God damn, Russians, 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 Russians. Give me something to brag about in the press. You know, ah, evil American came here. Imperialism. No, I, know, I know what they can do. I know what they can do. They can take like a lot of military tech that they don't use, you know, they, like uh, especially bolts and shit, and, and they can put them in a place. And then Russia blows them up and, and makes a big spectacle out of it, right? It's on television. It's, and, yeah. and then they say, we accomplished the objective. Uh, we denazified de Ukraine. You know, we demilitarized them like that. Yes. That was most of their shit. And it's now it's gone. So you give Putin something to brag about, like show him standing up to the like, evil Americanskis. And then you arrive at a peace settlement. Now, that's what's probably going to happen. And it's going to suck for Ukraine because Ukraine is going to be like, oh, oh, another slice of our country. Yep. 
too fucking bad, I guess. You shouldn't people, have people given say, up your nukes. You know, people say that I'm obsessed with Japanese in the chat. And I, uh, you know what? I fucking am. And I will tell you why. All right? As a Romanian, I should be obsessed with Romanian culture. So the fact that I'm obsessed with American culture should be a problem. But, like, what, what the fuck is the West producing? Like, the way of life, the standard, everything, all, all the morality, everything that, that is now in the West is woke. I disagree with the woke. So I have to look towards another country that provides something that I like. And that is Japan. Do you disagree, Arch? Um, hmm. do, did you know that they'd picked up massive, like, uh, there, was, there was a big radiation warning in, like, Micronesia or some such Asian shithole place a while ago? I don't even know what that is on the map, I'm sorry. Kwai Laijin Atoll, which I think is in the Pacific or something. There was a, there was a big radiation warning there. What and, happened there? Uh, it's probably something done. But I, what I want it to be is Gojira. 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 Yeah. Gojira. If Gojira was real, what do you think would happen? Um, well, Japan would be pretty screwed. I think, like, every single house next to an ocean or, or any source of water would drop in price dramatically. I think, like, insurance companies would not cover it. Yeah, Maybe you'd insurance. have insurance company. Yeah. So, so, like, we're talking about a monster that comes from the water, destroys cities, and, like, the military comes to jack shit against it, right? Well, it would give the Japanese military a good reason to, like, super modernize. Because in all the Godzilla movies, the Japanese military always has, like, fucking phaser tanks and shit and neutron mines. Like, they don't, they're not, they don't got that shit in real life. It, it would actually spark a little bit of international cooperation, because, like, everyone would try to discover technology to fuck Godzilla. Yeah, pretty much. This is why the Americans are always the bad guys in Godzilla movies, by the way. Because the Americans are always like, Ah, oh, we need to get Godzilla cells so we can make uh, weapons. And to be fair, that, America that's... probably would do that. But to be fair, that is the correct solution. Yes. Yeah. You have this creature coming out of the water, destroying cities. Like, you're not going to talk with it. So I, I very much so hope that this, uh, this sudden spike in radiation is indeed Godzilla. I mean, it, it makes sense. Kwailin Atoll, you know, that's roughly his area. You know, this could be Gojira. There's a, there's a good chance. Gojira. Gojira. You know, speaking about Japanese culture, did you know that their, their uh, line of, of emperors is the oldest in the world? Uh, is that by any chance because we've murdered the rest at some point? Maybe. But, like, they, they started from 600 BC, and it's going all the way up until now. 600 BC. You sure about that? Yeah, I, I looked it up. Uh, so, some guy named Jima. Jima, Jima. Although, to be fair, and this will piss off Japanese people, like, like what happened in 600 BC is, well, I mean, they claim it is, but like, can you verify it? I mean, as the more you go back in time, the more difficult it is to have records of shit that happened, you know? Uh, let's see... Yeah, okay. That seems to be a fairly unbroken line, oh. actually. Yeah, they've been around for a while. Huh. Not bad. Yeah. Then again, they're on an island, which hasn't really gotten invaded all that much, so... I suppose it stands to reason that like the, the greatest achievement of the Japanese Imperial line is surviving the Americans. Do you think, like, uh, Japan is, like, the, the Britain of Asia? Um, sort of? Except not as technologically advanced. Fertile. And fertile. Like the British Islands are more fertile. They, they have more agriculture and stuff. Stuff grows there. I don't know. Have you been to Britain? I don't know if stuff grows there. Well, not with the new EU policy, it doesn't. But like it's before the country. EU, stuff used to grow there, yeah. Horrible nation. I don't think so. It's not... I wonder if Japan was placed instead of the UK, if you would felt the same. It's like, the Europeans, like us, we, we have animosity towards neighbors. I, I think it is a, a little bit unfounded. Well, you know how the Chinese feel about the Japanese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's human nature. Like, you must hate your neighbor for some reason. I, I think it has more to do with the fact that it, 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 has, it has to do a large part with culture as well. And, and with civilizational level. 
too. Because the, um, the Danes, the Norwegians, and the Swedes have been at war with each other more than any other set of nations in human history. Like, several right. hundred times. That can't be right. Oh, it is. Like, these three nations have been at war with each other several hundred times. Like, constantly. On various levels. And now, we're best of friends. Because we've we've grown so rich and so fat that we don't really care anymore. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Japan and China, well, the rape of Nanking wasn't that long ago, and the Chinese are still bearing a bit of a grudge over that. Which, to be fair, it is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like when you talk with the Chinese person, they usually bring that up. Yeah. Yes, and to be fair, the rape of Nanking was pretty rapey. You know, it it was it was a 1600s conquest in the 1900s. To be fair, though, like, the Germans don't really hate the, the Russians for, for the, the Red Army rapes. Yeah, I suppose, but I think this has more to do with the fact that history also views these as separate nations. Like, Germany has kind of uh, psychologically insulated itself from Nazi Germany. Like, they don't consider it to be the same nation, in the same way mm. that a lot of Russians don't consider the Soviet Union to be like Russia, etc. Hmm. Funnily enough, there's actually um there's actually a pretty large scale Nazi party in Russia today, which basically want to go back to the days of the Soviet Union and thought that the Germans got a lot of things right. There are there are Nazis that are in Japan, yeah. But like they have like a Japanese perspective of it. Oh, there's a lot of nationalists in Japan. Like pretty, pretty fucking hardcore nationalists. Yeah, but like not, not, not just nationalists, not like like national socialists it's like okay these are the racists and and these are the good people and these are the bad these are the people i will tolerate and these are i will not you know like that type of thing have you have you seen the japanese white vans the one with the speakers on top i mean there's many japanese vans with speakers on top but none I don't think, like, the particular ones you're referring to. Uh, there was a famous, like, poli ultra-nationalist political party that would have a certain brand of white vans with massive speakers, and they'd just drive through neighborhoods going, like, foreigners are evil, Japan good, foreigners evil, Japan good. It's kind of it's funny because there's a lot of white people that go, like, yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree, and it's like, they're talking about you as well, you yeah. <laughs> Uh, Japan is a silly nation. But hopefully Godzilla will sort them out. God, I hope it's Godzilla. That'd be so funny. I mean, what what would we even do? What what would be people's first reactions? Like, okay, uh, nuclear testing alert. I'm like, okay, that's probably just nuclear testing. And like in a week, we see Godzilla on the television just walking into Tokyo. I mean, okay, if, if Godzilla was real, like we're, we're actually talking about the monster that's unstoppable, you can nuke it, it still exists, okay? It's like a natural calamity at that point. It's it, it, like like you deal with it the same way you deal with an earthquake. Like you get out of its way, and then after he is gone, you try to rebuild. And, and you're happy that it's just one because he can't trample the whole world, right? So it's just like it's going to be on the news this day. This city is fucked, and you're like, well, I hope the people there are safe, you know. And and, and then he goes back in the water, and people rebuild, and then he just pops up in another city. So so like all the shoreline would would have almost. No property value whatsoever. Like it, buying a house in California yeah, is going to be the cheapest place in the world, probably. Um, and then, like everyone will move inland, and and the more inland you are, the more expensive things get. See, I, I did actually think this through, Arch. I, I did put a lot of consideration into this. But what if it's Showa era Godzilla, where he's not actually that mean? He's not actually that much of a grumpy puss. He's He's just, like, trampling cities as a form of accident because he's trying to kill the bigger monster that's somewhere else. I mean, that wouldn't change things. Again, like, like people would move inland, right? And, and the property value of things that are inland are, are the most expensive. And, and as much as you go towards the shoreline, it gets cheaper and cheaper. It, it, we would also have to move, like, like right now, Japan would probably start moving its nuclear reactors inland, or, or they would decommission them. It would be like, well... If Godzilla comes up and the nuclear reactor is on its way, it's like, yeah, hmm. yeah. I do hope Godzilla is real. Eventually, we would discover like some form of I don't know gas or something that that debilitates the monster. I see. We are being very optimistic. I, well, we do have oxygen bombs, right? Yeah, but it depends on how much plot power Godzilla has. 
I mean, if it's alive, it bleeds. So there, there must be something that, but like, you, you would try it with, um, if a nuke doesn't work, you, you would try it with like removing oxygen. You try poison gas. You try like many other things that aren't necessarily like ballistic in nature. Get creative is the solution to the Godzilla problem, which fair enough. Hey, you have to, right? Because like, you try to lure it with food. It's like find out what it eats and just like feed it so that it goes away. Ah, uh, that's a lot of fish. Oh, yeah, but what is the alternative? Ah, oh, I don't know. Just be happy that it's just fucking with Japan, I guess. Speaking of fucking with Japan, there was a certain other country, kind of in the same region at least. Uh, you heard that Blizzard came crawling back to China. Did they? Yes, yes they did. Hmm. They've rejoined NetEase, that happy little corporation over in China land, to uh, begin releasing their project again, because there was a big uh, falling out between the two during the whole diversity and equity initiative nonsense, where they wouldn't uh, pay the Chinese their cut of the marketing. Well, how nice of them not to hold a grudge. Indeed. But considering the recent... Uh, legislation in China against mobile uh, gaming as well, which cost Netties God only knows how many billions of dollars. I yeah, guess they didn't the have a choice. It was in the billions. Yep. It is, it is, yeah. I mean, if you take a hit like that to your pocketbook, you might need to reconsider your friends and enemies. I'm just saying. Speaking of friends and enemies, too. I, I, I do wonder, like, why did the Chinese decide to go after video games? Like, one day it's like, how can we fuck our economy? Oh, they just do that occasionally. It's because it, it disturbs the morale of the young people and such other retarded nonsense. Sure, sure. But, like, Im imagine, like, you're, you're just sitting there and you're like, Let, let's make our economy just lose 50 billion. Like, but why, though? Because we can. Did you also hear that the world's largest grooming platform, Discord, cut 17% of its employees? Well, yeah, we talked about that. Now, now I, I heard... Your assessment that this may be because of ESG and stuff. But what if I were to tell you that ESG isn't going away. They're just rebranding it. So now it's not called ESG. It's called Energy for the Future Investment. Mm -hmm. Or uh, Green Solutions. Or, you know, like, like they're just rebranding the name. But it's still the same thing. Uh, I don't think they are. Because... At the end of the day, these corporations are still financially responsible. Like, they want to earn money. And for a long time, there was so much money in the world, and it was so easy to get, that you could just ask for it, and you'd be, you'd, you'd be getting millions. Like, it would just pour out of people's assholes, seemingly, seemingly, right? ESG investment was a trillion-dollar industry. Uh, it, it's fallen by a third. Like, f what was it? Five trillion dollars out of like uh, 15 or so was just wiped out last year there is a point at which these companies are losing so much money that they have to ask themselves either we push politics or we go bankrupt like there is like or um, or we stay solvent that's the thing you either go bankrupt and you push politics or you stay solvent and you do something else and i think when push comes to shove the corporations will always choose to stay solvent I mean, to me, it's difficult to even understand because I, I would have to know why they did it, right? Um, and I'm not talking about, like, the, the average foot soldier, but, like, the, the actual, you know, like, Larry Fink and, and just go, it's like, why did you decide to do this? Because it's definitely not financial. I don't think Larry Fink <laughs> believes in the cisgender heteronormative patriarchy either, right? So, like, what is the reason? Like, do, do you want to crash the market to have CBDC? Do you want to, I don't, I don't know, like cause crises? Do, do, like, what, why did you do it? What was the purpose? You know, do, do you have like friends that are grifters? And they, they, you look at America, top 500 companies, everyone is doing it, right? So it can't be like everyone is a believer. It's not about the believing thing either. They did these things because they thought they were popular. Like they were, they were told by their their uh, em employees, by their marketing associates, all these people, that Service if you just keep pushing this narrative, 
you'll win out. Like, look at this study. Like, people want diversity. Look at this study. Diversity is good for you. It'll increase revenue. And it'll take a while. Like, ESG, it's for it's the future. It's future-proofing your company. Uh, finally, we'll win. That's, that's what they were thinking. They thought genuinely so, that this was investing for the future. That they were jumping on the bandwagon before it left the station. Yeah, but, you know, if you come to me, and, and, and this is why, like, I didn't believe in woke ideology uh, the first time. You come to me and you say, if you stop hiding based on merit, and you start hiding based on how their parents fucked, you're going to make more money, right? Or, or if, if you told me, it's like, okay, so you, you got like this moral combat, it's, it's sex and violence, this is why people like it, right? Like women with big tits, and they're fighting each other, and this is like the demographic. But, but what if you covered the women up, you're going to get like more female customers? I'd be like, what the fuck? So fuck off, like, no. Right, well, like, it's because they don't tell you that. Like, you know they lie just as well as it. They go to the CEO and they say, okay, so our, uh, our setting has been all about sex and violence, but kids today don't like it. Here, look at this graph. This graph shows that people now are, they're worried about responsible investment. They're worried about sexism and excessive violence in video games. We got to change or die. That's what they say. They pitch this as if this is the consensus. That everyone is like, I don't want sex or violence in my video games. And then when that I doesn't sell... But, but, you know, for example, you know, there was an article in, in The Guardian which literally said that uh, teenagers are bored, with, uh, are bored of boobs. Like, like, they find boobs boring. And I was like, okay, so this, this study is shit. Like, I, I've been a teenager. There is no fucking way that if you're a straight man, you would, you would ever call this boring. Like that, you know, like that vocabulary does just exist in the lexicon of the young mind. Like you, you, you may say that you don't like them, you may say that, but boring, really, right? So, so I, I don't know. Like, like the idea that these CEO and representatives, like they're they're completely isolated on an island and they don't read the press, they don't they don't talk with each other, they don't have friends, they don't, you know, like I try have, to I analyze what's being said to yeah. them. It, it's just weird. I, I don't believe it. But, but it is a possibility. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I do think it is possible what you're saying could have happened at some companies. But I don't think it happened, like, at every single company. I think it happened at all of them. Because I think the majority of them aren't morally invested. They simply... Because most people are fucking midwits. Most people are told, hey, this is morality. It's like, you don't want sexism in your company? No. You don't want racism? No. Well, then you ought to do this. Like, okay. Yeah, no, like, fine. But but I also think, like, many of them were like, well, you do this and you get ESG cash. Okay, fine. But, but like, why did Larry Fink do it? Why, why did BlackRock do it, right? Because, like, for them, I have, I have lost it's not like shit. it's the future or, or whatever the fuck, right? Like, like for them, like, like, they knew what they were doing and they knew it's not profitable. Mm, no, nah, because, again, even if it's not profitable today, it's profitable tomorrow. That's the argument they keep making. That's the entire point of ESG. It's future investment. It, the environmental social governance. You got to invest in renewable energy or tomorrow you'll be fucked. That was the brilliant part of it. It was, oh, you'll be profitable tomorrow. Mm. I think they should have invested in, in, in nuclear weapons and, and oil and, and all that stuff that is profitable. I think they should have invested in cat girl sex robots, but then again. I, I, I have this, this lady who works at Wall Street, and uh, she went to JP Morgan to talk about her, uh, her investments. And literally, like, a manager from there was like, uh, so do you consider safe, like, green investments or something like that? Like, w would you like us to, to give, oh, sustainable, sustainable investment. Like, would, you, would you like to, to make sure that you only invest in, state? and she's like, no, like, I want oil, like, I want profit. And the guy laughs, like the guy that was there, like laughs and says, "Like, yeah, I know, but I have to ask this to every customer." I'm gonna do a little bit of the super chats now. Then uh... Sven Hagen says the computers on the Apollo module used actual hand knitted solid state memory knitted by old ladies. They specifically hired for it. No fucking way. <laughs> That's, that's really good. See, again, th that's the thing. The engineers of old, they did shit regardless, you know? If it, was, if it was hard, they found a dumbass workaround. Now, it's if, if there isn't a software for it, if it isn't an app for it, if there isn't already a solution, they just throw up their hands like, no, 
Can't be bothered. And it's not only that. Like now, it's all about the license. Like, yes. Like if you want to hire a, a coder, it's like where where did you study? What what the, what university? Oh, I'm self taught. I'm, no, no. Yeah, no. No. Can you solve this problem? Yeah, that was in my textbooks. Good. Can you solve this problem? No, that's not in my textbook. Okay, that's fine. We will never go, like, going to the moon required problem solving. It required drive, initiative. And we don't have that anymore. We don't. You could, you could give NASA all the money in the fucking universe. They would not be able to do the moon landings today. Ala Mandorius says, you're right about moon hoaxes. I've spent a lot of time debunking every piece of evidence a moon hoaxer a friend of mine put up. I now know more about cameras, light, shadow, and Apollo equipment than I ever want to. Ah, yes, the idea that we never went to the moon. I, I think we probably did. I think I have no evidence to suggest we did, mind you. I can't, you know, look up at the moon and go like, mm, flag. But it seems like too big of a lie to cover up. I don't know. Uh, Jesus is here, look, busy. busy, says, Hey, Arch, any chance of having fellow gatekeeper Danny Fortuna on the podcast? Top man helped raise a lot of money for a sick 40k fan, too. Probably. I don't know who this person is, but if he wants to get on the podcast, you know, contact me, as always. I like bringing lots of people on. Sol the Lich. They hired a woman clothes stealing wacko to manage nuclear waste. Imagine that thing was the most qualified for the position. Ah, and Service speaking of uh, citizenship. of women's clothing here, uh, that is true, wasn't it? The expert. Now, to be fair, the expert who stole women's clothing, he was qualified. He had all of the qualifications. He probably could do his job. It was that he was all, but I'm, I am betting you there was a 75-year-old white man that didn't have a fetish for women's clothing, that was equally qualified for the job, that wouldn't have been caught at an airport stealing women's clothing. Decency was on the ballot that day, Arch. Yep. Artemis Fowl says, Arch, check Discord. Mm, whatever they wanna. And Lord Comes as Barton has been a member for 11 months. Thank you very much. 11 months. Nice. Greetings, Bjorchman. Opinion on the new Phase Connect generation. I don't think I've asked you yet. Like Muyu and Amy, personally. I like Muyu and Amy, personally. I don't know. V, what is the latest Phase Connect generation? I haven't looked into it. Like, Why not? Uh, for me, it started that it ended with my Pippa. But v, there will never be another Pippa. You're the person who likes uh, VTuber stuff, so you must know. Well, I've also been busy with my game, so I haven't looked into it. But wow. I, again, like like VTubers are like uh, content creators. Well, not kind of like streamers, right? So so it's like, well, there's five new streamers coming up. It's like, and here's their PNGs. I'm like, okay, well, I will have to listen to their content before I can make a decision. Like you can't just, you know, drop it like that. Can't you? I mean, I can I can say like their avatar is cool or whatever, but like. The thing with Face Connect though is like they're they're going to have bloat. Um, you you can't just shit out talents every single year. It's like, oh, are you a girl that's depressed and desperate? Well, come for us. They're you not know, no. Like you're diluting your audience as well. I don't know. Like from a from a from a business perspective, because it's it seems to have worked out very well for them. Um, I mean, Hololive has how many fucking generations now? Yeah, and there will never be another Gargura. Mm. Like, the first generation is still the most popular. I think it's just a question about throwing shit at the wall. And sometimes you're going to get a smash hit, and other times you're just going to get the regulars. And even the regulars will do okay. And even then, V, you disappoint me. Because even I know more more than you now. I'm pretty sure Gargura wasn't the first generation, was he? First English generation. Well, that is like saying the first black woman, V. You're adding in qualifiers it is. now. Well, yeah, You're no, moving like, the I, goalpost, V. Well, not, not really, because like, I, I can't yes, watch are. Japanese... I can't watch Japanese VTubers. I don't understand what Shifting the fuck you're saying. the goalpost. Okay, have, fine. But, but like, I'm talking about... like, uh, oh God. When you have localization, <laughs> especially if it's like from a place where they don't speak the original language... It can be considered like it's the first. 
Yeah. Like for you, it's different because like as a Norwegian, you speak English, right? So like if it, it doesn't matter like if it's the first Norwegian VTuber, like you already watch the English ones. But like if you're for, like if it's a Japanese country and you don't speak Japan, like the first English VTuber is your first interaction with that content. The gold post. It's over there now, V. Look at it. Ah, Look at it. Whatever. Whatever. But you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I don't have time watching to watch YouTube in general. Uh, not even the, the little VTubers. I, especially as the more the more corporate this get, there was a there was a brief period of time there where YouTube was actually recommending me smaller creators. It stopped now again, but it was it was recommending me videos like with a hundred views, two hundred views, three hundred views, etc. Like tiny people, and I quite enjoyed that. So I was looking through it, and the majority of them, you were like, "Oh yeah, I see why you have two hundred subscribers," but. There was always a little bit of um, little joy in there, wasn't it? To see that and be like, hey, this could be something I really like. And you click on it and you open it and you see it. The, the entire corporate culture of VTubing, I... Mm, the, the, oh, God, the culture around it. I really hate the culture around it. The, the have, assembly line lost. talent. Sure. Mm. The assembly line talent. Yeah, I mean... Uh... You know, at one point, you grow so big as a company that uh, just by hiring new talent, because the thing is, like, you're going to neglect talent. Um, do you remember, like, the uh, YouTube, what was it? Fuck, I forgot what it's called. The community things that, um, like, like you joined this, this company, which was supposed to take care of your channel uh... and advertise it and promote it. Um I mean, there, it, there's for... multi-channel networks still around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, right? Like, like when they get to, like, when they're at first, and you have an issue, you get to your channel network, and they help you out, right? Um, but when there's like so many cloud customers that they have, they start ignoring you, so you just end up paying them, and they give you nothing. Well, the uh, the base, uh, the biggest advantage of like a multi-channel network, because I've got one for the lower channel, uh, is that they give you better ads because they do have better rates. Like I, I pay them like two percent, and they increase ad revenue by like ten percent. And it's like okay, fair enough. But beyond that, they don't offer much in the way of services. It's just access to a better ad catalog. Basically, that's it. Mm. Well, in the beginning, I remember it was um, you get a strike, you talk to them, Heresies and they will talk to you to, to see if the, the strike was really <laughs> legit, and they would help you out like that. Yeah, like the idea was initially that it was supposed to be like building communities, but it ain't. It ain't. Yeah, because because it went so big that um, they they literally don't have the staff to to help everyone. Yes. Now, Hololive is earning money hand over fist, so if they need the staff, they, they can hire the staff. Uh, Hololive, yes. Like, I mean, Hololive is the Disney of VTubing. Yes. I'm just looking forward to uh, to uh, live AI VTubing. Now, that will be that will be the funny one. Because then you'll get another, like, crop. Like, they could literally generate a new fucking YouTuber, like, every month or something and just pop them out there and then they'll just purge the ones they don't like after a certain amount of time and just keep on going until you have 500 little gauguras running around well i would like to have one as a co-host i mean that would be cool right like it remembers all the names in the chat um you can ask her questions it's like oh tell me about like why, why is this a helicopter carrier yeah and, and, and it would actually be able to respond that would be fucking cool oh yes i will replace you the moment i can with a cute little anime oh. girl well, I, I would finally be able to have a normal sleeping schedule, Arch. I, I will I'll finally go like, well, as I'm asleep, the AI is working. And ironically, though, like I am, I am more than happy to see like the uh, the AI co-host future stuff like that. That'll be really, really cool. Now, it will wipe out so YouTube. Like we yeah. will be fine because we have audiences. Like we could make AI versions of ourselves and basically have them like do dumb stuff. And able to, like, build up that as management, sort of, in a way. But for anyone who's trying to break into YouTube, oh god. Like, it's already close to impossible to get into a market as oversaturated as this. When there's about 5,000 versions of your favorite content creator on top of that, fuck. Mm. 
I mean, you can always just yeah, the the way it works on YouTube is you network, right? So like, if someone knows you, they can come on the show, and if they are charismatic and and they know how to be entertaining, they can start growing a presence. Harrison, Possibly, Harrison. but Fire, you you yes. can look at the reality of this. Was in VTubing, right? The corporate mm -hmm. VTubers are massive. And the independent VTubers are the, the hordes and crowds and the thousand subscribers range. Like, that's the reality of the situation. The haves and the have-nots. Mm. And I very much so that will ch think, I doubt that will change. Uh, let's see. Gabriel Artia. Yes, McDonald's prices are too high. Also, isn't the presence of McDonald's restaurants in a city actually hurting local businesses that could fill the niche? Well, it's a franchise, so it's just a local business that basically goes to McDonald's going like, hey, I'm going to pay you 10% of my profits, uh, let me use your sign and your menu, essentially. So, yes and no. Uh, ben says, not in California, V, one, uh, a quarter pounder, I'm guessing? Burger at a few casual places I like is 12 to $14 yeah, by I itself. You can still get a large double quarter pounder meal for $14, and an equivalent amount of food would be 20-ish. Yeah, same over here. Like, a dinner in Norway at a restaurant will run you at least $20. Like, at least. Fire is the answer. And probably $30, $40. Well, again, like, the, the whole thing with McDonald's was it was so cheap, right? Like, as you said, like, $1, you had, like, the combo. Um, and now, okay, fine. Maybe maybe in Norway, it's, it's still more expensive to eat at a restaurant. But, like, with a little bit extra money, you do. So, like... The thing with McDonald's is also, like, I eat it, and after three or four hours, I get hungry again. Like, it's not, it's not See, good sustenance. That, that is true. Like, the food is shit. <laughs> like, no, it's, the food it, tastes good. Like, I, I like no, the taste of no, it. But, no, But it's, you don't like the taste of it? God, no. Okay, so, like, if you go to a fast food restaurant, right, like, from the commercial ones, like, well, what do you like more? Do you like KFC? V, I'm Norwegian. Like, we don't have this shit here. Like, I've okay, eaten at McDonald's, just, like, oh, twice God. in my life, and it's always been terrible. This is, this is like, me trying to talk about chess, and I'm going, it's like, all right, well, have you performed, like, this maneuver, like, the Queen's Gambit? And you're like, well, I don't play chess, V. And it's like, what the fuck are we well, talking I, about? I've the tasted subject then? McDonald's, <laughs> and it's awful. I need to gatekeep you from the fast food industry, Arch. You do. I'd prefer that, actually. <laughs> it's, it is bad. Yes, you're absolutely right. Don't, don't ever come to a McDonald's again, yeah. See? Live AI in an RP campaign would be funny as fuck. Because you know those suckers could, uh, could roleplay. Like, they would actually yes. hard roleplay all the time. Yes. V, we need to resurrect your idea of the, the VTuber roleplaying campaign. Would be funny, yeah. Uh, shoot me dead. Eleven dollar combo versus eight ninety nine for Asian food, appetizer, and soup and egg roll. Yeah, Asian food is cheap, but then again, it could be dog. Uh, it could be one. Do you know one. what I want to play, Arch? And I, I'm really sad that I never got to a Stargate campaign. Oh God, no. Yeah, yeah. Why not? No. Why not? No. You don't want to go through the Stargate, Arch? No. Like, I, I am willing to bet you'd come up with such interesting shit. No. It's like, oh, the positions are fortified. Instead of going in, we just launched rockets through the Stargate. No. Why do you not like Stargate? No. What, what, this is the only pure thing that's left in sci-fi. Why, why do you hate it? No. You're gatekeeping me. Is this what you're trying to do? Yes. <laughs> See? That is... um. I, I wouldn't even do, like, 40k necessarily anymore. Like, Warhammer Fantasy is always fun, and we could just do, like, regular adventures for once instead of Skaven all the time. Because I do love Skaven, but it's nice to be a normal adventure. But You know what would be nice? Dark Eldar Adventure. Because, like, that would be fucked up. Like, you have Dark to do fucked up things. Dark Eldar yeah. Adventure. Yeah, surviving the yeah. intrigues of the Dark Eldar court while being Corsairs, etc. But the thing is, like, I don't think you can pull it off because you're not dark enough. I'm sorry. It would be a, it would need to be like a, you'd need to come up with an objective, because you could absolutely pull off some dark shit with that. I mean, we, we did so in the vampire campaign, but this would be less spicy, because you wouldn't have Nazi vampires, I guess? Yeah, it, like, even the vampire campaign, you weren't dark. Like, you need, you need to actually be sadistic, Arch. You need, you need to do shit that is, like, really, like, mindfuckery level. 
You mean dev gang raping prisoners? Well, that was like what dev did, but yeah. I don't hmm. think I was there for that part. You know, but yeah, no, like. Unironically, one of the problems with the, uh, the the vampire campaign not being dark enough is because both S Sargon was role playing as an actual national socialist, <laughs> which mm. which aren't that dark. Like they're they're pretty heavy duty in their own right, but they're not necessarily sadistic. And Rags too, and Rags is a bit of a moral fag in these ways too. So he was objecting to uh, people, you know, eating uh, human beings alive and gang raping them. No, the thing is that um, as as a vampire, you're already like considering that humans are inferior and you're killing them, right? So like adding Nazi to that doesn't really change much. Like they're they're already monsters, so right? Like, like... Uh, what you would could use is an RPG set in the myth universe where you're just fucked. Like there are. Endless hordes of the undead coming down at you. Every battle can be won only at tremendous sacrifice. The myth universe. I, I think I heard about it. What wasn't there like video games with it? And, and yeah, like you, you you have like elves and stuff, and there's undead that's coming down. Not a lot of elves. The Fyrbolg, uh, kind of like elves. But yes, the the fundament of the myth universe is that the world is just. Fact. Even if you manage to defeat evil, evil will come back in a thousand years as the person who defeated it. So the greatest hero of the age will always become the villain in the next Age of Darkness. Like, humanity has been, put, been pushed to the brink of annihilation dozens of times. Society reset again and again. And is it like they can't just kill the hero? Like, just burn the corpse or something? No, because uh, whenever you kill the great evil, he will just resurrect in a thousand years' time as whomever killed him. Ah. Uh, well, what about imprisoning the great evil, then? Well, that's what they tried the last time. They uh, cut off his head and threw it into a bottomless pit, uh, and then they were hoping that would banish him. But they couldn't figure it out, because uh, within a hundred years, his lieutenant, who they failed to kill, Soul Blighter, returned and tried to take up the mantle of the great evil. And then they killed Soul Blighter too, which they think might have broken, like, the wheel of history. But they don't know, because the series never got a, a Myth 4, I guess, sequel. So, so it's just like video games, it's not like books and shit. Yes, it is an entirely video game universe, but it's a really cool universe. Hmm. What was the last one made? Three, Heresy's I question. think. Myth 3, The Wolf Fire Age, the which was a prequel <laughs> to Myth 1 and 2. Hmm. And, and like, is it like 2000, 2010? Uh, Myth 3, <laughs> Wolf Age. Let's see. 2001. Old. You know, we, we can make a game like that, Arch. It's like, it doesn't look expensive to make. Um, probably. Um, honestly, you'd probably even maybe want to go for the Myth 2 engine at that point. Like, full on... Pixel no, you'd, you'd make your own. No, you'd, you'd use an engine that's already made. You use Unity or some shit. Go mm -hmm. dot. Like, like you, you look at what engines are available. You don't want to make your own. The Myth Universe I, is I, really I, cool. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I, I think it would cost around $40,000 to make, give or take. Myth Universe. But the thing is, like, would, would people play it now? Um, I think right now we are heading in the direction of... Uh, hope style like we don't have dark universes anymore and people are getting kind of sick of the dark universes we do have like people are thoroughly sick of evil superman for example so i don't know it's also i'm, I'm looking at it that it's a very basic video game like um it's, the way the it's squad move, based uh... tactics uh which was pretty yeah. revolutionary at the time actually but yeah today no yeah, no, there's no point making this. Kick V says Jet. You know, I should actually leave because uh, I'm not feeling very well. So it was, uh, it was nice having me. Uh, is, is there any more Super Chats that you have to go through or, or any other news articles? That... Uh, news, no. Super Chats, yes. No. Well, you can do that by yourself. <laughs> you can do that by yourself. I need to go make some tea. All right, I'll see ya. All right, that's great. Well, fat Olive is gonna wobble off. 
Adam's Foul says, uh, light carriers can launch VTOL F-35s. It probably can, but why would it want to? Why would it need to? Why would it have to? Uh, zero Firewater over on Rumble. V, Ukraine was allowed to commit all sorts of war crimes with America's blessing. Why wouldn't they just do something, then neglect him? That's a good point. Remember, Ukraine is just another European nation. They're probably dickwads. Especially to people who they, you know, don't like. Oh, Streamlabs. Don't do that to me. Uh, Dragon Mage. Hi, Arch. Could a blank affect the Emperor? Probably. I mean, he has psychic power, so probably. Uh, Fappy the Clown. Howdy, Arch. Have you ever played the Old World Blues mod for Hoi 4? It's really good. Probably the best Fallout theme mod of any game to date, in my personal opinion. <laughs> also, if you end up playing Kaiserreich in the future, make sure to crush the syndicalist scum. I have played Old World Blues. Yes, it's really good. And R. Gray, welcome to map painting again. Uh, hopefully you'll have a break and he also high first him. Oh, that was yesterday. I've had the cloud. Did I not read your stream labs yesterday? God damn it. I'm very sorry. That was from yesterday. God help me. Crazy Templar. Hey Arch and V, is there any new current anime you recommend watching at the moment? Anime at the moment. So current. Um, From the fall season. Heresy's the question. I'm thinking. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Arch that ox the Arch dot exe is thinking. Ha! <sighs> like not a lot of has really stood out this season. I'm not done with the season yet, so there might still be stuff, but I can't think of anything that really like captured me the the fall season yeah nothing comes to mind at all <laughs> there were there were some okay ones uh the one with the little pig liver thing that one was cute i guess but retarded so um citizen. shy was nicely animated but it was boring as fuck so there's that Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you what do you want from me? <laughs> I really can't think of that much. It's been a bit of a bit of an ass season, honestly, largely. The um handyman Saito, that one was was pretty cool, I guess. That's from Winter. I still haven't watched the Near Automata anime. Uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba, you know, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is always pretty good. Yep, I'm pretty much stuck. Hmm. Oh, oh, um, Isekai Oji-san. Um, Old Man from Another World. That one was pretty funny. I like that one. That one's pretty cute. That's my anime recommendations. It's been a, a dry season, okay? And Globeman, Arch, I like see I like seeing smaller channels in my recommendations. I see why they are small channels. Hotly laughs. Truly, this proves my superiority. <laughs> yep. Well, kind of. It's like I click on one of them, and you hear the background noise of their mic is just like like they've got a fan in the background, or it's a poorly connected microphone or something, or they're way too close to it and they blow your eardrums out. Or the, the video quality, like there's an enormous watermark up in the top right corner. You know, stuff like that. And to be fair, I did a lot of these errors too to begin with. But it does make it a lot more difficult to get off the starting block. Like, it's unfair as fuck, I agree. But you need to start out at a much higher level today than you did even when I started. And incomparably, of course, to when most people started. Like, PewDiePie's first videos is just with a terrible microphone of him, like, getting blown up by a creeper or some such shit, you know? Stuff like that. Gushing over magical girls, says Shat. That sounds like a title. Hmm. I might need to go over the list and see if there's anything I've missed out on, actually. Like, Book and Hero Academy is still running. I, I'm still, I still find that 
amusing esque in its little dumbass way. You know, it it exists, and I can still watch it. And it's like, well, that's a thing. It's dumb, but it's a thing. Um, Farmland Saga. That was that was this year, wasn't it? Season two of Farmland Saga. That was a thing. I don't know if I'd recommend it to anyone. I'd I'd much rather recommend you just read the manga of Farmland Saga rather than that. But you know, and there has been way too much pointless isekai too way too much actually unironically pointless isekai the 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 formulaic isekai the it's the exact same story as every other isekai isekai like if you're gonna do isekai now you're gonna have to do something dumb with it like rebirthing the character as a vending machine or as a dog, or as a cat, or as a pig, or something, or just uh, villainess storylines. Vill- villainess storylines can still be kind of okay, you know. But ah, oh, the isekai, ooh, isekai genre. You want to talk about saturation? Oh heavens. Um. Ben says, Arch, pay us big bucks if you want USA as world police. No, you'll do it for free. Because you've done it for free up until now. Uh, William Mamihiro, an alternative is to vote in companies. Deary and Koei Agricultural Company, for example, had a vote to remove DEI and return to merit. I voted for it. Yep, yeah. Uh, companies changing course from internal perspectives, absolutely. Yours, man, when does the West learn that we f- have fought the religion and empire of Islam, that because we throw away Christianity, they don't change anything? Yeah, no, like, just because we go like, religion is silly, doesn't mean that the rest of the world does. Murgon has been a member for two months. Thank you very much for your continued support, sir. The Huttites accidentally fired missiles at a Russian tanker two nights ago. Putin is pissed. Well, you know, they barely understand the weapon systems to begin with. They can't tell the difference. Shadow Fox 2300, never forget the US ended empires because of boats and sunk a whole ass navy for one boat. Correct. As did the British, mind you. you know, people who have boats don't like people fucking with their boats. Nya Mickwork says, after a long day working in the garage on the mech, 40k defiler, and a robot waifu, it's nice to kick back and listen to Archcast. Cheers. Thank you very much, and good luck with the robot waifu. Charon 5582, I feel like Godzilla wouldn't survive sarin gas. Hum. Maybe. I guess we'll have to try. So John says the CCP goes after gaming because console consumes a lot of power and limiting gaming limits power drain. (laughs) That sounds disturbingly plausible. Plus, they're probably looking at the West and out of feminine um, generation and thinking they don't want that. Oliver Nord, I'm late to the stream. Did you cover US intelligence believing Chinese ballistic arsenal was sabotaged by soldiers stealing solid fuel to cook food and the hatch of the silos were poorly maintained? I didn't hear that part, but it wouldn't surprise me. Sorry about that. I'm uh, I'm back. It took less than I expected. Uh, I'm less. having a fever and I, and I thought that it would take time to find the medicine, but it was in a drawer that uh, was the first one that I looked. It was in a drawer. Did you see what Artemis Fowl gave? Uh, probably. So apparently, uh, Biden DHS sued over hidden documents showing that the border crisis is intentional policy. <laughs> I wonder what Dev would say. I think Dev would say that nothing has been Heresy's proven yet, and this is merely, is the merely yet further <laughs> indications that something is wrong. I mean, look what they did with Texas, right? So you have the immigrants coming in. And uh, Texas is like, well, can you secure the border? And they're like, we're doing our best, but they're still coming in. So they're like, All right, well, we're bossing them to sanctuary cities. And, and now they're they're like suing the bosses, the boss companies, and they're also like trying to sue Texas over this policy. And it's like, okay, well, fine, we'll defend our border. No, you're not allowed. I mean, it is so painfully obvious that it is intentional policy. There was the... Um... They, they they did block like a river again a while ago, not allowing like border agents to go near the river. Yeah, I do question. I did hear about Fire that. Is the answer. <laughs> yeah. Listen, V, 
if the crisis ends, then then what are the Democrats going to do? I don't know. It would be unfortunate. No so more new voters. Citizenship. Tragedy, indeed. It it is also like the um. I I, I guess like you get more electoral college votes the more people are in your state, right? Well, only if they they change the thing because it's already been determined, and I think they would have to go through like a a full on like recount and recalibration of it before that happens. A census. Yeah. But you know, the last time they made the census, like the Democrats were so incredibly against citizenship. asking someone's immigration status. Weird that. Yeah, very weird. Mysterious, one might even say. I I still wonder if non-citizens have, can I vote. Lost. I mean, legally, I know they can't. But like, if you're a non-citizen and you wanted to do it, like, how difficult would it be? Not very. Zenith says, when Twitch allowed nudity for a day and Asmund Gold supported the move, do you think he knew that Twitch had layoffs coming and he was backing up the policy change was a favor for Twitch and their PR? And their PR. No. Um, no. no they, I, I think no. Twitch just needs to embrace the fact that they're a titty platform now, honestly. Yeah. Paris sees the question. Uh, like, Why the idea the that streamers on Twitch are being informed, like, they're being briefed. It's like, hey, we're going to fire people, or hey, we're not doing financially very well. You know, like, like that just doesn't work. Um, but but I do agree with what Arch says. Like, the problem with Twitch showing titties is that it's a, it's a platform that's family-friendly. Like, it's 13 only. But, like, no one would be upset if they had, like, a separate page, right? You, you click a link. And it takes you to, like, the dark side of Twitch, and you have to verify you're an adult with a credit card or some shit. And, and then you, you you get to see... I mean, t tw uh, Twitter does it, right? Like, you have Not Safe for Work on Twitter. Discord does it. You have Not Safe for Work on Discord. Both of these platforms have kids on, despite the fact that I wish they didn't. But, but like, you, you can have a system, is what I'm saying. You can have a system where you have, like, Not Safe for Work for adults that want to see it. And you still have, like, the people that are minors, like 16 or whatever, like, posting on Discord and talking and shit. Like, you ju just have to age gate it, like, right? Like, if you have a Discord server, you have to say that this channel is not the Not Safe for Work channel. And when you click on it, it asks you for confirmation. And, you know, you ban everyone that is a minor that, that claims they're under 18, they get banned. And, and you can have both. So, like, Twitch can literally do that. Twitch does pretty much just need to admit that they're a they're a twi they're a titty streaming platform now, and just embrace it, because that's their revenue source right now. Titty streaming. It's it's also the fact that they they want political content, but they discourage debate, right? So like every single right winger got banned from the platform, and then you have like a circle jerk of leftists where the audience eventually dies off because they they heard the same arguments over and over. They know the takes, so they just get bored. Well, it's also the fact that leftism will eat the platform because it's a not pro Twitch. Like leftism is not a pro Twitch ideology, and so when you're I encouraging, know, that deer... yeah, that that Twitch mascot, the deer. I have so much power, and they can't take it away from me. And I'm going to do bad things to good people, you know, like yeah. You remember and that? And that's going to devour the platform because the leftism isn't going to encourage sound financial decisions. Mm. They've, but they've made their bed, and now they are indeed going to get fucked in it. And it is as unavoidable as the sun rising in the morning. And that Honestly, is a good thing. No, it's not good. No, it's not a good thing. Because if Twitch dies, all, all of those crazies are going to come here. Like, unironically, do you remember when Tumblr went down and, and all of them moved to Twitter? It, 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 like, I like Twitch. It's a containment zone. Right, these people have a culture of censoring others. Like that's what they do for fun, Arch. That when they wake up in the morning, when they jerk off, instead of thinking of a beautiful wife, they're thinking about banning someone off of the internet. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's, those that's, that's how it's always been. That's just yes, how yes. it is. Yes, yes, but they were there, and we're here, right? Like I don't want them here. Is my point. I want them to stay there, but in order for that to happen, there still needs to exist. That's not gonna happen. They're gonna move over here. It's gonna be just like it always has been. This is just the world in which we live. Shit flows. It always will. A little bit over the lip, a little bit down here, a little bit over there. Arch, if, if I see a single poke face in my fucking chat, I'm going to hold you personally responsible. 
Furthermore, the financial collapse of companies like Twitch is the only way to send potential warning signals to other companies that, hey, this was a poor financial decision. You must burn them with their own fire. Burn them. Burn them now. And you may not have to burn yourself. Dethen says, doesn't Japan have a problem with age graphics? Yes. Japan is going to wipe itself off the earth because they're not fucking enough. But hey, that's Japan's problem. Is it though? Like, I, yeah. I keep seeing this doom and gloom. It's like, okay, is exponential human growth the only solution forever in perpetuity? Like, the, does it, it need to be like a generation where people fuck less? And uh, then the next generation, people fuck more? Sadly, that's not how humanity functions. That's the problem. Hmm. How does humanity function? Humanity functions that if you don't have replacement rates, you will end up with just old people without the ability to pay for the old people. If one generation stops fucking, you will have an enormous gap in the middle where there's not going to be anybody earning any for the thing for the old people. Yeah, but that's the welfare state. That's every state. Like, okay, uh, fine. But, if but like, if okay, you don't so... want exponential human growth, you definitely don't want not the welfare state. Because what the welfare state replaces is everybody having 500 kids, hoping that some of them will live long enough to support them in the future. Okay, but, but even then, right? Like, you, you're basically saying that the older generation will suffer. You know, like, fair. But that doesn't mean that the next generation will, will suffer as well. Well, we're not on a one generational gap at this point. Hmm. And as the older generation suffers, the new generation, like, look at, look at our new generation. Our new generation is weak. Our new generation is dumb. Our new generation couldn't go to the moon. Our new generation is going to cause the hard times. No, it's true. But, but like, think about it this way, right? Like, I mean, it did happen in medieval period, right? Like, the Roman Empire goes away and then the medieval society are more backwards than yeah. the Yeah, and would you like yeah. to live in the Dark Ages? <laughs> No, but like someone has no. to, right? But my point is yeah, that it's me. Uh, but no one wants to, but like someone has to. My point is that it's more like a calendar. You know, you have like spring, you got summer, you got autumn and winter, and I think it's a cycle. And yeah, we're we're in the middle of winter, but like spring is going to come. So why well, Hayden says you should never fire the tech priest. Uh, ben Arch Pippa sang, keep your rifle by your side. That's it good. Black Mage 9, V, if you ask why, then you check early life. I don't know what that's referring to. I don't know what it means. Joseph, favorite Space Marine chapter? That one I can answer. Blood Angels, because they're cute vampires in space. Lucifer the Dobeman, hey Arch, since this time last year, I... Got through 114 of one of my books, and I've painted my own Chaos Army. Thanks for the book recommendations, and I completely understand why we need to gatekeep from the tourists. Have a great 2024. Same to you too. Thank you very much, sir. Adoman says, also, V. Fuwa Moko, the twin VTubers, is the most interesting VTuber in Hololive. Gura hasn't streamed in ages. Get with the times, V. Yeah, get with the times, V. It's like me watching anime and not knowing what happened in the last Naruto episode, you know? It's like, okay, fine, whatever. Walking Kiwi has been a member for 12 months. So apparently a lot of VTubers are retiring from, or VTubers, YouTubers are retiring from YouTube. What do you guys think about this? Also, yay, one year, one year membership. Congratulations, indeed. Um, I think, well, the people who are retiring are the people who have made so much money and have basically passed their organization over onto new people. That it's just a business for them now. Like, they're management. So they don't have to be talent. They don't have to be on the creative side. They're happy. They're fine. They're yeah. fat. They're uh, rich. Like if, I, if, I were, if I were to make, like, $20 million, I, I can retire as well. It's like, okay, well, with $20 million, you'll never need money in your life again. So wow. why, why do I still go to work? Why, why, why can't I just enjoy life and do whatever I want? I mean, with current year inflation, V, I don't know if $20 million is, is as much true. as you but, think. But like, it, yeah, I mean, just because you're not YouTubing doesn't mean you can't have other projects like build, like, as you said, be management. Like, yeah. you can just build a company at that point. You know, you can build the Lotus Eaters or whatever. It's like you don't you don't have to do be YouTubing because YouTubing is really fun. Like, I, I definitely enjoy what I'm doing. Uh, but it does prevent you from, like, having, um, I would say, like, a normal life because I, your sleeping schedule is on reverse. Like, you're awake during the night and stuff. Um 
it's a lot more difficult to travel because you don't you don't have days off and holiday because of the algorithm. So there are some disadvantages, and I can see why people would be like, "Well, I I don't want the disadvantages anymore. I made too much money." Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I don't think it's gonna have much of an effect on anything, honestly. Uh, if if it was. If you like, if YouTube was a smaller organization, then I might argue that the people at the top, quote unquote, retiring might be something large because it would open up room and you would see like a revitalization of the platform or a change up or something like that. But that's not going to happen. Like it's the platform is so large that I handful of people retiring is not going to really affect much, especially as in most cases, these people's channels are still going to keep doing what they're doing. It's just that they're management now. Yeah. So I don't think it's much in the way of a change, really. Besides, we don't know if they'll stay retired or if they'll show back up again in six months and go like, I blew all of my money on hookers. Please help me. Uh, Silver Kestrel, so the next D&D &D campaign will be Warhammer Fantasy, Dio and Bayou. Well, if we can get enough VTubers together, okay? We need just a band of retarded little females that can pretend to be Dark Eldar. That's apparently the story we're going for here. And women roleplay evil arch. Well, if not, we can always just make them uh, painfully good dwarves, you know. Or high elves. High elves would be kind of boring. Hmm. Maybe wood elves. More classical style adventures. I actually like the clans of the dwarves and the intrigue and the grudges, but like for some reason you didn't. So we could we could do a dwarf campaign. It would be a, be an interesting reverse to the Skaven campaigns. I could usually do. But to be honest, though, like, aren't you bored of this? Like, like there, there's so many other universes. Like, you can make a Fallout campaign. No. Um, there's another one with Evil Computer. No. Like, everyone is... is... No. 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 Fallout's a dumb universe. Fallout's a stupid universe. Nobody likes Fallout. Yeah, but you can make it in a vault. And no. you can have whatever rules you want. Nobody likes Fallout. Warmer Fantasy, good. Warmer Fantasy, good. Need to be alive. Need to be allowed to. To be explain. honest, I do like 40k more than, than old Warhammer. Uh, rogue Trader. Hmm. What could you do in 40k? I mean, you could do like a proper Inquisition campaign with actual Inquisition things in them. Rogue Trader style, limitless resources. Well, why not? Why not? Why, why not play Dark Elder in 40k? Nah, because yeah, it, it's, like, it's, it's too one-dimensional, honestly. If anything, yeah. playing orcs could be hilarious. What about playing like a human in a Tau-controlled planet? Uh, Insurrect. Nah, me, 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 me. Honestly, it'd be more interesting to play the Tau at that point. No, because they're your bosses. Uh, you don't disrect, you just follow orders. Well, that's even more boring. Ben says, thoughts on equipping catacans, catacans like US Marines and aliens. What, smart guns? See, the smart gun is cute, so a smart gun will probably work. Uh, Lou821, have you seen the Fat Electrician? Hugh's video on the military is our fantastic. The Fat Electrician. I have not, but it sounds like a YouTuber, in which case I definitely haven't watched it. Uh, Rasta Zero gushing over magical girls is a villainous story. The manga it's based from is unhinged, and the anime is taking the madness a step further. Gushing over magical girls. That sounds like a title. Service guaranteed citizen. Oh, isn't that that's something that's running now, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. I never watch anything that's running at the moment. I wait till it's done and then I watch it. I will watch it then, though. Hopefully with another season of Tanya de Grechov on the way as well. Uh, so John Yajin Tensei, Karate Survivor, is a legitimately good isekai, which has no harems and a fairly grim gritty. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Artemis Fowl says, announce tomorrow's livestream. <laughs> 
Hmm, Artemis. I don't know. We might be doing FNAF tomorrow. That's true. Uh, Mr. Luckless, the British kicked off the opium war over a very poorly worded letter from the Chinese emperor. Fun times were had by all. The opium wars were kind of fun, yes. It was one of the most one-sided conflicts in human history. Alex Adamson says, I read a manga, King of the Labyrinth. The main character is a minotaur just going around killing heroes. It's an interesting one. Worth a read. <laughs> that does sound what kind of funny. What is it called? What is uh, it called? King of the Labyrinth. Oh, so it's not a female minotaur. No, probably not. Hmm. Last chapter in 2022. Aha. Uh -huh. <sighs> I hate the mangas that just end and they just don't get translated anymore. I was like, well, that was a waste of time. Are you saying you want localizers out? No, I want endless mangas like Kingdoms, which has like 700 chapters now and just kind of keep keeps going for all eternity. I want that. Mm. The endless manga is the good manga. The never-ending manga. American Outlier gifted five memberships. Thank you very much, sir. Service guarantee citizen. And Bridge God Worshipper has been a member for eight months. But message retracted. Apparently, his entire account got heated. <laughs> American Outlier. Hi, Art and V. No dev. The manga is coming along just time-consuming. We got an Android 3D sculpture made of Ryoko. And keep up the good work, gents. Thank you very much. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, dev is undergoing uh, hormone therapy right now. He's finally going to transition. And the... Uh, the, the, the uh... God help me. What is the female thing again, V? Estrogen. What? There we go. The estrogen what? is hitting Dev hard. It does make people go plump. Yep. The estrogen is hitting Dev pretty hard. It's making him feel unwell. But, you know, eventually he'll be more estrogen than man, and then he'll Arch. be healthy again. Arch. Is Dev vaccinated? Uh, I don't think so. You don't think he's vaccinated? Why not, though? He trusts the government, doesn't he? He does trust the government. Which is silly. I think he's vaccinated. And Are considering sure again the that? estrogen. I don't know. Walking Kiwi, it sounds like an opportunity for new channels to rise, if nothing else. Eh, I don't know about that. See, again, the, the retiring thing. Even if they were to, like, delete their channels and close everything off, the, the sliver of land, quote-unquote, it would open up would be a meter in China. Like, it's... It's a zero point something percentile of YouTube. I I don't think it will really clear that much room. Like, you would need a meteor to hit San Francisco <laughs> to really see a difference. And Sajad. Arch, a dark heresy game. Malice Inquisitor decides the Tau are the perfect weapon to fight chaos and launches a crusade to capture the Tau race. See, honestly, I'm, I'm more interested in the idea of just doing a Warhammer fantasy campaign where you're just the heroes, you know? There, there's, there's, like, do it very basic. You're not like in our current D&D &D campaign where there's some, like, a big evil or anything or Mithril or anything. You're just heroes like you do quests you clear up things you know maybe there's some mysteries here and there but everything's kind of normal ah. Is, isn't this why we're playing with Sarga? no because Sarga's already told us kind of his plan remember did he yes oh, just a nice nice normal little thing and I, oh, God damn it, I hate the D20 system so much. I miss the percentage dice rolls from Wormer Fantasy and Rogue Trader too. So much where you just like, okay, this is my stat. This is the thing I need to go. Voila, nice and simple. It was so it, it is. It is, uh, yeah, no, like it is what you say, but it's so annoying. Like you, you make a character and you put all the points in charisma, like literally dump everything in charisma. And, and then... Especially with a DM like Sargon. He makes you roll once. He makes you roll a second time. He makes you roll a third time. And if at any point you get anything less than a 12, it's a failure. Well, it's also because we don't roleplay enough. Like, I 
we need to go away from the I explained what happened to actually talking with the NPCs. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Hmm. Maybe a 40k game with... Oh, you know what? Sisters of Battle 40k game. That would be perfect for the VTubers. Oh, heavens. A for a no, Warmer Fantasy campaign as all dwarves, where the goal is to eradicate all elves. Yes. Yes. Hey, you can have it in the Beard Wars, right? Oh, unironically, it would be interesting to have it in the War of Vengeance. But, I mean, it would be very, like, unit one-sided, I guess. Like, if you pick dwarves, you're almost universally going to be fighting elves. No, but, like, you, you, can, you can make the campaign so that's an alternative setting that you can still lose. Like, if you, you know, like, if you make the wrong choices or whatever. Yeah, sure, but it would, like, the War of the Beards lasted for like 100, 200 years or something. And there weren't all that many others involved, so it would just be like fighting elves if you're dwarves or fighting dwarves if you're elves. Like, I don't know how much you could make out of it. Yeah. I guess you could have some adventures where, like, you you prosecute some green skin and stuff, but it's like the world was surprisingly stable back then, you know, besides the war. Hmm. Necromunda? Uh, Necromunda. Uh, Underhive stuff, maybe? You know, gang stuff? Possibly. There's a lot of ideas. Uh, Viking Kiwi, like your own Alex and Gothric's. Uh, Gothric. Uh, Alex? Felix and Gothric, I'm presuming, campaign. Um, yeah, kind of, yeah. Or you, where you just go on more, like, classical adventures. Because we've always played, like, often bad people in the RPs we've had, or under very specific circumstances. It could be interesting to just have a campaign where you kind of make your own adventure. Where V could go up on whatever retarded tangents he wanted as well. Oh, God help me. And the real whole set says, make well, Dev fight fine. Raging Golden yes, Eagle. I want RG to excoriate Dev for being the little red bridge. He is the little red bridge. It is true. And Glowman, Made in the Abyss is a dark fantasy series. Pretty dark if you want to try it. Heresy the series made me feel bad, nicely animated, yes. and messed up. <laughs> oh, I know. I know of it. And the thing is, I really hate, <laughs> like, tragedy stuff now. Um, Elfin Lead uh, is one of my still favorite animes, but even though Elfin Lead has kind of a good ending, at, le at least it's good enough that you can interpret it into being a good ending, I hate tragedy. It's like, but I Arch, don't... If you, if you just want like to be the hero, why not play that board game where you're like Space Marines? Because it's boring. No, because you roleplay them properly. Like, I'm pretty sure there must be some Space Marines out there that roleplay improperly. It's boring. Like, you're just space marine. You just kill shit like boring. Heresy Dumb. is the Gay. question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> no. What if you nerf the space marine so it becomes more interesting? No. Because then there are no space marines anymore. Gotta be regular dudes. But tragedy, it just makes me sad. And I'm like, I don't want to be sad. I don't feel like what, being what sad. What if, like, you know, there, there is a story. I don't desire to be sad. Where the space marine ally with the necrons. Like, what if you have something like that? No. Because it's dumb. But it's canon. It's dumb. There's another story where the humans ally with the works. Yeah, that's more common and be more interesting. How do they talk to each other? Uh, the orcs just talk imperial, but dumb. Well, they know the language? Yeah. Hmm. It would be fun, though, yeah, like to, to be humans that are allied with the orcs against Turinids or something. Well, at that point, you might as well just play the orcs. No. But playing orcs Cause, fun. Because you bully humans. It's a lot more funny to get bullied by the orcs. Sort of <laughs> As chat mentions, yes, if you want tragedy, just look at the real life. Indeed. <laughs> As they fire, water says, V, you tard. People will go extinct since war and famine and disease still exists. So as people have less kids and something happens, those people will disappear forever. And their neighbors will take it. 
That's true. We can't depopulate. Okay, so so like never, never in human history did we have smaller populations than we have today. Like it never happened. Like this, this is the default, and and the only way from here is to go up and and never stop. Is th is this what I'm being told? Is is this what? And then huh? go to Mars. We need to go to Mars. I mean, no, unironically, like if we could go to Mars, then yeah, it would be like it would just have more kids. But like. The the idea that um, when people get richer they have fewer kids and when people get poorer they have more kids like I I do think that's a thing. Yes, it is. Which is why we need to make everyone yeah, in the West poor. People. Yes. Except for me. Yes. Arnold Fowl says, "Arch, find a different favorite anime. We both can't have Elfin Lead as our favorite anime. Go watch Chrono Crusade. No, Elfin Lead, good." Lucy was her name. Lucy was a good girl, I think. I'm pretty sure. And she lived, too. She lived. Lucy lived. Lucy was a good girl. Uh, Dragon Mage, if the Imperium of Man fell, who do you think would take their place? No one. Oh, Chaos would, for about five minutes until they'd finally destroy the galaxy. Nice and simple. As so the, the They would be the only ones capable of actually ruining it properly. Forge World Management Sim. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's an idea. Roleplay as Tyranids. Oh, God. How do you roleplay as a Tyranid? I don't know. You just kill shit and you're, like, hungry. Yeah. Well, Warmer Fantasy is the way to go. Definitely. Definitely. And put it in the Empire so you can have some guns as well. You know, get some repeater rifles and shit. And I'm honestly thinking... You should start out as a higher level for once, you know? Just start out a little bit medium level. Then eventually just nerf the shit out of the party by throwing random debuffs on them. Yes. Yes. But that about covers it as far as I can tell. We've gone through all of the, the super chats. Thank you all, everyone, very much so for watching, for spending your time with us, and for your generous donations, of course. I will be having another stream tomorrow. It's true. We'll be playing some FNAF tomorrow, which will be horrible. I have no doubt. Uh, but also, it says Games Workshop could be worse than Chaos. It could be. And go in the dark. Top five anime in the past decade. You can't ask me these questions. I don't remember half of the animes I've watched in the past decade. What? Mm, Tanya the Evil? That one was good. Butchie the Rock, that one was okay. Uh, that's all I remember. See, I, I'll say this. Anime has a difficulty of leaving a proper impression on me. Mostly because there's so much every single fucking season that I forget half of it. Mm. What about like a, an Attack on Titan story? Then? But why? You'll just be eaten. What if you have the Titan ability? Mm. But then you'll just be eating other people. I'm just dumb too. But there's other Titans that can beat you. Mm. I have, I but have then lost. you're just fighting regular things. You're just bigger. And also, and also, there's like plot and intricacy. You can't just are there get into Titan. are there plots? Mm. And I mean, is very good. I have I the have entire lost. season three is about them like overthrowing the government. So yeah. What was it like? I have this. There's one anime in the back of my mind which I can't quite name or imagine which I remember I liked a lot but I can't remember it now. Hmm. Demon Slayer is nice and it's written by a woman so it's very diverse. Hmm. That's important. Right? I have I have lost. No. Shit. Perhaps not. The one about the children being eaten by demons is horrifically overrated, just to put that out, that out there as well. It is overrated, yeah. It, it, it starts is. really interesting, but then it, it goes to shit. Yeah, because the, the, the plot is actually really predictable, and it becomes really predictable immediately. And then it's just like, like a very like, long period of Yeah, time. no, like they had the good idea, but they didn't know where to go with it. Yep. It was, uh, it was a silly anime, and it deserved to be shamed of itself. But now, now we're at the end. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you all again tomorrow. You are contractually obligated, of course, 
to watch me play horror games because I don't like playing horror games and so you're going to have to you know, help me through it. Otherwise, it'll just be dumb. Now, artist file, I recommend Angel Beats Chrono Crusade S Cried. Angel Beats was pretty good, but it's also depressing and I don't like being depressed. Chrono Crusade. Chrono Crusade. Chrono Crusade. Chrono Crusade. Chrono Crusade. Oh, that one. I watched that one ages ago. Like, that's not even this decade. That's fucking ancient. I mean, at that point, you might as well bring up Helsing, I guess. And that make AOT was inspired by Muvlov and Ace Combat. Muvlov is a really good manga. Not manga. Uh, visual novel, more correctly. One of the best visual novels. The best written visual novel ever. And I heartily recommend Muvlov. The animes are kind of dumb. Because they try to, you know, um, scrunch a 400-hour... Uh, visual novel into 12, 24 minute long episodes, which is just a really, really dumb idea on every single solitary level. Right, now, now we're done. And thank you for being here as well, V, whilst Dev is getting over his uh, estrogen infusions. Well, thanks for inviting me. Um, really liked it. And good night.